that. Oh, we didn't even test it, but we were really hoping that we were able to close that lid and contain the fire. And that will trickle out of bounds, and Missouri will have it at the 35. Roundtree lets it roll out, so Connor Lembert's opening kickoff sets up Mizzou at the 35. Hubert, Hubert Owens is our referee. You do not want to kick out of bounds. 18, kicking team. Receiving team will put the ball in play at the 35-yard line. First down. So we take a look at our starting lineups brought to you by Chick-fil-A. And it begins with Drew Locke, third-generation Missouri Tiger, committed when Gary Pinkle was head coach, Barry Odom defensive coordinator. But the best recruiting job was from his dad, Andy, the former Mizzou lineman, told Drew, how would you feel if someone else is the quarterback at the school that you love? Drew chose Missouri, and he has turned into a record-setting quarterback for the Tigers. Ish Witter with them in the backfield, and Witter will take the first down carry, and Witter gets about three. And let's check out Rick's report on Drew Locke. Well, the young man has a giant arm, no question about that. The only problem he has sometimes is a tendency to force balls because he knows he can get it into tight windows. Missouri statistically the second fastest offense. Flick to the outside. Jamon Moore. Tolliver makes the stop after a first down at the 49. 18. Take us through the offense. Well, a player to keep your eye on today is number 81, the tight end Albert Okawe Boonham. He's a matchup nightmare. Drew Locke says he can trust this kid. Had five catches, 116 yards, and two touchdowns a week ago. And it off again, Ritter. Ritter rolling to the 40. One yard line, real close to another first down, Liddell on the stop. So impressed by this Missouri offensive line. They're quietly underrated, just a nice gap scheme, finding holes in the middle of that defense. Arkansas's ability to try to make Missouri play one-sided is key, and Missouri running the ball effectively here early. Second best offense in the SEC, 13th in the nation. Lock loads up over the middle, it's picked off. Andre Tyler has the interception. And the senior quarter brings it back to near midfield. Andre Tolliver picks off Drew Locke to give the Razorbacks a boost. This is an over route, and Locke does not allow the two receivers to get to the opposite hemispheres. He ends up throwing it to a corner that's covering a guy going across the field. You're going to see it right here. Tolliver's following the over route. He ends up picking off the post throw to the other receiver. Locke needed to get that over the top. There is a flag down. So big call coming. Sideline interference, Arkansas. 15 yard penalty, first down. Not a good one, but you can understand the celebration from Arkansas with everything going on. They needed a spark early. That's exactly the way this game started a week ago, is coming up early and making big plays, giving short fields for your offense. Andre Tolliver has been one of their playmakers. He's a tall cornerback. He used that height there to go up and get that football, but we've already seen two costly penalties early on in this game for Arkansas. They've got to be better down the stretch to beat a Missouri team that's pretty hot right now. Senior day, Andre Tolliver has the second pick of his senior year. So it's Austin Allen and the Razorback offense from the 30. Allen will hand, and here's a toss. Trick play, first snap from scrimmage. Deep shot, downfield, and it is incomplete. And that was almost picked on the toss by Jordan Jones. And that leads us to our Chick-fil-A starting lineups. Austin Allen, two years ago when this game took over for his older brother, Brandon, both quarterbacks, the Fayetteville High School Bulldogs, then the Razorbacks. Dad, Bobby, been on the staff for 20 years. One last game for the Razorbacks with Allen at quarterback. And Austin fought to get back here from a shoulder injury that nearly ended his career in October. And now here's Austin Allen. Another deep shot. And this time it's Jones. He holds it in inside the 25. Jordan Jones inside the 10. Inside the 5. So he tosses it incomplete on first down. And then Jordan Jones on the receiving end of a 67 yarder on second down. We talked about at the top of the game the big plays that Missouri's back in was susceptible to. Arkansas really wanted to be able to hit the deep shots, and they find one here early. And now hurry up for first and goal. Allen will hand off. Whaley picking his way down to inside the two. As we take a look at today's red zone numbers brought to you by Verizon. Arkansas 
74% touchdown when they reach the red zone. That's been stellar all year, a strength for the Razorbacks. And now on second and goal, Whaley will take it. He does. He is marked just short. Just short. Sherrills and Garrett come up to make the stop. That's another goal line stop for Sherrills, who is slow getting up for Mizzou. I would expect them to take another look at this. Uh, the question will be whether the knee hit the ground before he extended the ball over the goal line, but he certainly did that. Cantrell slow getting up for the Razorbacks. They've been battered all year, but now the question is, uh, Rick, I'm with you. That looks, I mean... Looks as if the boys got it right. It's real close. Would make it third and goal and inches away from the goal line as Cantrell heads back to the Arkansas sideline. And given all that's going on in Arkansas this last couple of weeks, I'm telling you they're in four down. And you see that they just changed their personnel, bringing in a fullback and two additional tight ends. They're going to go big boy football here, Rick. Getting some early confidence up front for this offensive line is key. Big boy football is what got Brett Bielema this job. And now third and goal. Jackson and Whaley in the backfield. Austin Allen. Play fake. Allen on the roll. Trying to find the edge. Austin Allen is in. Touchdown. Austin Allen on his senior day. Of the IN team from the senior Tolliver. Austin Allen takes it in for a touchdown for the Razorbacks. And it's another hot start at the end of a bad year for Arkansas football. And this is what I mean. When you know you're in four down, as I'm sure Dan Enos knew, you get a chance to take that kind of chance because if they are coming off the edge, Allen knows enough to throw the ball away knowing that he can live to fourth down. Great call by Dan Enos. The PAT is good. So last week against Mississippi State, it was a 14-0 start. Razorbacks couldn't hang on and win it. This week, 65 yarders sets up the one yard touchdown run. And these hogs have again answered the call early. Was dead last in the conference on defense and big pass plays allowed. Touchback, they'll have it at the 25. Much better kickoff this time from Connor Leppard after the first one went out of bounds. So we take a look at the Arkansas defense already has a takeaway. They do. They've done a nice job. And keep your eye today also on Santos Ramirez. He's a captain, one of the leaders of this team, had three forced fumbles and an interception already this year. He needs to lead that back in, which has already showed up and made its presence felt today because Missouri brings some something to the table now with the length and speed they have on the outside edge. Is that a technical term, something, something? Something, something. Okay. <laughs> That's as technical as right. that he gets. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Roundtree is in the backfield. The true freshman from North Carolina with Drew Locke. And Roundtree will take it. And he is met as soon as he grabs it in the hole by Harris. You know, this Missouri offense, uh, Josh Heifel calls it, it's kind of a dealer's choice. When you get this trips formation right here, look for the tight end to be featured. Handed off again, Roundtree tries the left side, tackled again, and that's another stopper. It's Andre Tolliver with the helps of Austin Caps there. Spoke with defensive coordinator Paul Rhodes before the game. He said it's crucial today that we stop the run. Arkansas has been really nice at that third down. It's been a problem for them at times this year. Here's a great opportunity for them to put together back-to-back -back great drives to start this game. Part of the five-game winning streak. Yes, the schedule is softened up, but Missouri has taken advantage. Lock, time to throw. Deep shot, third down, incomplete. Miscommunication, here comes yeah. the flag. It's Jamon Moore and Andre Tolliver who got tangled up. Tolliver got uh, caught for a little bit of uh, extracurricular. Defense, number five. 15 yard penalty, first down. Life is a corner, right, AT? You get a pick, you get a pass interference. You love the aggression, but sometimes you're too aggressive. At the top left of your screen there, you cannot impede the receiver's ability to catch that ball. I don't believe that that ball was catchable. They could have let that go, but it was pass interference and another costly penalty early on for Arkansas. Brett Beal is getting to know our side judge today after that call. Our 
Side judge is Chad Hill. That, I mean, that has to be what Beal was talking about there, uncatchable, because clearly there's contact with the ball in the air. Yeah, you rarely win that one. I've tried it a bunch of times. <laughs> and that's what's frustrating because there was miscommunication there. That was actually a lucky break for Missouri because that would have been an incompletion no matter what. And now we have some kind of further discussion. Looking at the spot, perhaps. They're talking upstairs, obviously. As soon as we know what they're looking at, we'll tell you. Looks like it was going to be the spot. You just saw the umpire move the ball up three or four yards. Now he's moving it back to the 40. If, if, it's, if it's less than 15 yards, it's a spot foul. If it's more than 15 yards, a 15-yard penalty. So that's an 11-yard penalty because it's the spot foul less than 15. And that may have been that discussion. Round tree, right side, and he is dropped by Dre Greenlaw, the junior from Fayetteville High School, second leading tackler for the Hawks. Keep your eye on Dre Greenlaw right there, sliding and scraping. To be a good linebacker, you have to have good instincts because you're so close to the ball. He did a great job there. On second down, Locke will pull. Locke takes a deep shot. Inside the 10, incomplete. Boy, big deep shot intended for Emmanuel Hall, the junior from Franklin, Tennessee. Rick, I'm down here on the field before the game. I noticed the sun's a kind of a precarious angle. You have to wonder if that affected this catch. You're going to watch him squint as he looks back for the ball right here, and he just loses it. You can see that he just absolutely lost it in the air. Something to keep track of. It's a high sky here in Fayetteville. And Hall's a big deep ball threat. Couldn't bring that one in. is a dealer's choice offense, guys. Drew Locke has the opportunity to take anything that he sees out there. Play clock winding down, two seconds, one, and they're not going to get this one off. Missouri forced to use a timeout with a play clock winding down. So the opening drive was the interception by Tolliver, and now a timeout prior to third and six for Mizzou. On CBS. You know, Josh Heifel's offense typically probably 70% of the time is a dealer's choice offense where they're going to have two receivers, one side, one receiver to the other. This is third down and five. This will be a predetermined throw more than likely looking so, for the matchup that he wants. So out of the timeout, you think they know where they're going with the football here? They're looking for the matchup they want. I like this number 81 right here in the slot, the trip strike side. Lock, time to oh, throw. Kristen. Everybody's covered, so Lock now is going to take off. Lock has to dump it and heaves it to the sideline, throwing it away on third down, and he took a big pop. He thought he had Okuebuna. Give Arkansas's pass rush all the credit in the world. They, get, they moved him. Looks like we got a flag here. They're going to probably call this intentional grounding because the ball didn't cross the line of scrimmage. Intentional grounding. Offense number three. Loss of down at the spot of the foul. Fourth down. But watch it. Okuwebunam, he is wide open. It's a little bit of a out and up, and there is no one home. But that's what a pass rush does for you. That's how the front end can help the back end. Drew Locke couldn't set his feet because of McTelvin Aguim and those guys getting home. No one legitimizes the, the plight of the offensive <laughs> line better than one Aaron Taylor. But Tony hangs it high. Tolliver, fair catch just inside the 30. By the way, that intentional grounding, even though he's outside the tackle box, didn't get it back to the line of scrimmage, and there's the flag. And speaking of quarterbacks and quarterback play, let's take a look. Rick's report on Austin Allen. Well, the senior has a complete understanding of what they're trying to get done. He is a coach on the field, if you will. Unfortunately, sometimes he tries to be a one-man band. He's trying to will this team to victory. A week ago, he ran for a first down, trying to be a tough guy, took a sack when he didn't need to. This, obviously, is a great start for his final performance here uh, for the Arkansas Razorbacks at home. And now Austin Allen, quick hitter to the outside. Slant complete. And a solid game, still fighting to get to the 40-yard line. Well, Rick, we talked about the importance at the top of the show of Arkansas needing to stay balanced. A lot of injuries on the offensive line this year, but keep your eye on Yelda Froholt, the left guard. Didn't practice on Monday, 
been off and on with ankle injuries. They have to stay balanced, which means running the football like they did in the red zone, getting a touchdown. But it seems like Allen's hot. I'd stick with the pass a little bit, but they got to keep Missouri honest. Eight of nine for Petway, handed off Williams he, with a second effort. It's enough for a first down to the 41. Let's look at that Missouri D. Well, it's been a remarkable turnaround on the defensive side, and a big reason why is because of Terry Beckner. He's a junior out of East St. Louis. He's a twitchy, disruptive defensive lineman, but the coaches told us he's a leader. He was one of the guys instrumental on this entire team, that when he talks, people listen, and his play shows up not only off the field, but on it. He was a one-man band against Vandy's offensive line last week. Short gain for Williams, brought down by Marcel Frazier. And you meant twitchy in a good way, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. As an offensive lineman, the thing you hated was a guy that was big and quick. If he was just quick, you could wrap him up. If he was big, you could get on him. But when he's both, it makes it really hard to block. you got to pick your poison. One thing to keep track of today, guys, is the prowess of the first down yardage Danny Enos gets. If he can stay in second and six, second and five, it'll be much easier for him to call plays. Play action out of the eye. Allen on the roll, screen busted up. It was intended for Patton on the screen, and Brandon Lee knocked it down. Great job by Brandon Lee staying home. It's just a naked boot. He was trying to hit the tight end off the backfield, off the plaques, and look how aggressive the linebackers are for Missouri. There's some opportunities here for misdirection and potentially some end around stuff, which we know Arkansas likes to do to get onto the perimeter. Austin Allen wants that throw back. You gotta get that ball to your receiver. He was open and would have had some room to run. Third and nine, Allen pressured and sacked. Dropped by Marcel Frazier, his seventh sack of the year for the Tigers. Well, we're seeing the prowess of pass rush on both sides today. If you can get, get to the quarterback, you can disrupt things. Obviously, the Tigers do a great job right here. They run some stunts, which is an exchange of gaps, but they keep themselves alive. As an offensive line, you have to stay shoulder to shoulder and can't let the defensive lineman get to the adjacent hip of the offensive player, which is what happened there. And that sacks, getting after the passer, showing up here for Missouri. And this team is good. They can get after the passer. That's a good sign there. Floyd had a punt return for a TD versus Vanderbilt. He's backing up. Good kick from Johnson. It'll hit inside the 15 and trickle out inside the 10. Blake Johnson. Hens the Tigers back, so a long field ahead for Drew Locke after a 57-yard punt. Locke trying to get the Tigers rolling on the road. To the postseason in that game against Clemson. Witter takes it across the 10. Still not driven back. Bijan Jackson, whose solid senior day continues, hit a knee. Beyonce Breeze said yes, and now he gets a tackle. Making it second to six. Did they ever figure what would happen if she'd have said no? You know, if you, it's always, it's always good to hit a knee, right? At the end of the game, that's good for the offense. No timeouts left. Here comes the flag. Oh, uh, great law. McTelvin McGee's first tackle for game. <laughs> and the umpire throws a flag right there. It's usually holding on the offense. I know you hate those words, Eric. Not holding, not trying, Rick. Just got to know how to do it. That means getting your hands Personal inside foul. on the breastplates. Hands to the face. Number 52 defense, 15 yard penalty, mm. automatic first down. Number 70 does not have to leave the football game. Huge one on TJ Smith, and that note about not leaving the football game because Durant's helmet popped off, but because it's caused by a defender, doesn't have to sit for a play. And again, penalty's been a problem here for this Arkansas team. Keep your eye right in the middle of the screen, 52. He's got his right arm all up in the grill and the face mask of the offensive lineman and the officials are on top of it. That's the fourth penalty for Arkansas early on in this game which just makes Missouri's job that much easier. And he was all up in his grill. I think you're perfectly diagnosed AT. <laughs> Locke's going to hand off Witter. Only gets a couple to the 30. Greenlaw again on the stop. Paul Rhodes has to be ecstatic about his run defense thus far. Ish Witter had been averaging almost seven yards a carry in this five-game winning streak for the Tigers, and they are corralling the run beautifully to start this game. You almost get the feeling, though, you got to be disciplined with your eyes on the back end because Missouri's committed to the run. They're bound to take a play-action shot here sooner or later. Locke's going to pull it. Huge hole for Locke to run through across the 50. Drew Locke slides down to the 
35 yard line. A gain of 35 with the legs of Drew Locke. Well, now you know why the run defense has been so good. They're just pouring everybody in there. This time, Drew Locke sees there's no one home, takes full advantage. Devin Richardson was coming off that outside edge and he didn't keep contained. Locke trying to find Tremont Moore. Tips it to him. I mean, that was playground. He was looking for more to go deep. So, all right, you're going to sit down. I'll zip it to you anyway. Well, we talk again about dealer's choice. When the single receiver side, and remember, Emmanuel Hall and Jamon Moore each just line up to their respective sides. It, Jamon Moore will always be to the left. When he's the single receiver, it's a hitch, it's a slant, or it's a go. They, Locke thought he had him on a go. Jamon said, I want to catch the hitch. Back on the ground, Witter. Bigger hole this time for Ish Witter. Caps finally makes the stop. It'll be third and short. When you talk about this turnaround with a Missouri team and ask Barry Oda, where does it start? The first guy he talks about is Witter, the perfect picture of a teammate. And on third and one, Witter has enough to move the chains for the first down. He's one of only two senior starters for this Missouri offense. Well, he's a scat back that's got quick feet. And that per picture perfect of being a teammate means he shows up every day on practice. Lock, play fake, zips it, incomplete, intended for more. I just, you know, I love watching these kind of undersized scat backs play. He runs behind his pads. He's got great feet. He's patient. He understands how important it is to set up the offensive lineman's blocks by being patient, using his vision, and then accelerating his feet through the hole that they create. And he's been a really nice addition considering Demarie Crockett has been down for most of the year. Lock, pop pass. Okuwe Buna inside the 10 trying to keep his feet for the goal line. Marked down just inside the five. First and goal, Missouri. What a talent this Okaway Boonham has been for this Missouri offense. He came in at 215 just a year ago. He's up to 260. First and goal, Lock hands Witter straight ahead, pushing to near the one. Still pushing, still pushing, and he will be just short of the goal line. Forget about the second effort. It was third and fourth in the scrum. And Witter nearly got it across the goal line. Second and goal. Tigers will hurry up again. Handing easily in. Touchdown, Mizzou. Ish Witter takes it across the goal line. And a hurry up. Quick strike. TD for the Missouri offense. Hard to hold that Tiger when they're going this fast. Just a beautiful mix of play calling, mixing the run and pass, taking advantage of some play action. And Drew Locke's legs that started off so effectively a week ago against Vandy, showing up here towards the end of the first quarter, getting them across midfield, and he took care of the rest. Tucker McCann for the PAT. The Missouri drive started at their own eight-yard line. In just three minutes and 26 seconds, 11 plays. Eight of them on the ground, including 35 from Locke. 92 yards. Mizzou into the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers even at seven in the battle line rivalry. Eastern. All right, AT, what do you like? I like Auburn in that game. I think it's going to be a uh, fist fight and alley fight. But got to keep your eye and find a way to stop Calvin Ridley. I think he's among the best receivers in the country. Take a look now at Do Project Smarter presented by Home Depot. The guy that really jumps off the tape is number 47, Kale Garrett. He's a middle linebacker. He's got great instincts. This is a gap exchange, but his vision in the backfield, he diagnoses, he doesn't take any false steps, and he takes a nice angle scraping down. As you're a linebacker, when you get to your gap, you either have to take on an offensive lineman or make the tackle. Pierre Garrett does both, and he's a big reason why, with his instincts, this defense has turned the corner. Arkansas out of the eye. We do not expect them to try and keep tempo with Missouri. They're fine going deliberately on offense. And with the way that Missouri's been running the football, they're helping them out a little bit. Whaley on the left side, short gain on first down. 
just not enough. It, not enough meat on the bone right now for the Arkansas running game. This has to get four and five yards, and maybe they'll they'll be able to peck away and get to that number. But right now, it's leaving Dan Enos in too many second and longs, which is a pass rush down if you're a Missouri Tiger. And we saw what happened on the last drive, Aaron, when that was the case. Certainly was, and with all the injuries that they've had up front, remember they're down Frank Ragnow, who's probably a second or third round offensive lineman. Brett Bielema telling us he's among the best offensive linemen he's ever coached from a toughness and smart standpoint. Seven rushes, three yards for Arkansas, and just a couple more to add to that total for Whaley as Jordan Harold makes a stop, and now Dan Enos is back in third and reasonably long. Third and sixth, I mean, he's going to have probably five or six plays on his list right now that he's looking at, but again, you have to factor in how long can Austin Allen hold the ball. We know that the depth at wide receiver is a question mark for Arkansas. They hit the big play early. Explosives are always fun as a coordinator, but you've got to be able to turn yards. Look for him to get something intermediate here. They're going to cover up close at the sticks. Allen out of the gun. Slant caught. First down. Deion Stewart. As the grab across the 40. Great call, getting something out of his hands quickly. Inside slants are easier from the gun than outside slants because the timing works out. And you can see Allen gets the ball out of his hand. Very easy to protect that, higher. Huh, yeah, it is. And especially because with them bringing linebackers from the second level, that's a great route to be able to throw it behind the linebacker and in front of the secondary coverage. Play action now on first down. Austin him, Allen loads up, deep shot, and it's caught inside the 15, across the goal line, touchdown. It's Jordan Jones again. He had the 65-yarder to set up the first TD. This one goes for 58, and a touchdown to put the Razorbacks back on top. This is just a condensed formation, which gives a lot of room out on the side, but this is just speed on speed. Nice subtle move, but keep an eye to see whether or not he gets in here. Great effort, and he extends. I think they got this right. That's a touchdown. It was remarkably close, but what an effort to go vertical. Arkansas trying to beat Missouri at its own game. The officials are going to wait to hear from upstairs whether this is actually a touchdown, but it was a beautifully uh, concede pass pattern against what we call quarters coverage, guys. Quarters means there's Field guys covering a each. Touchdown. The previous play is under further review. They're looking to see who gets the quarter deal. When you run the inside receiver vertically, he eats up the safety. He takes the safety out of the e equation, which makes it one on one against the corner. Allen did a great job of watching that relationship. They tried to play the corner in a press relationship with the receiver. He ends up sticking him outside and beats him beautifully for the touchdown. Touchdown is it's called. So now our replay official, Jack Childress, in coordination with the SEC offices in Birmingham. It looked like his right knee was going to go down a little bit before that, but because he extends, keep an eye on his right leg, he extends and straight, keeps his leg straight, so his right knee never hits the ground, then the defender's arm comes beneath it, and that little delay there is just enough for Jones to be able to break the plane with the football. You think that's touchdown? My, absolutely. My guess is, is they're going to spot it just short. Mm. That's my guess. Aaron? His right knee never disagreeing. touches. We're disagreeing. That never happens with us. <laughs> <laughs> we disagree about what month it is. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Ruling in favor of Mr. Taylor on this one. Taylor won, New Heisel zero. I'm, I'm on the board, boys. I'm on the board. But hey, how about Arkansas, man? This big pass plays that they've been lacking since Allen went down, they're finding it today with a receiving core that's extremely beaten up. Austin Allen, 4-5 for 144 and a touchdown. That's the way you want to start your last game for the Razorbacks. Jordan Jones in his Arkansas career is yet to have a 100-yard receiving game until this first quarter on two catches, 122 yards, and a TD. It stands on the board. Austin Allen, Jordan Jones, that makes it 14-7, Razorbacks. I found a weapon in the passing game in this first quarter against Mizzou. Roundtree will bring it out. Roundtree dropped as he gets to the 15-yard line. Time for our AT&T field pass. Here's Adam Zucker. Adam Zucker 
How come Miami couldn't play like that against Notre Dame? You know what I'm saying? It's a different story there, <laughs> wasn't it? Round three. After a gain of three, Dijon Harris, the SEC's second leading tackler, has another here. Pitt was also the home of the kicker, Chris Blewett. And so they've got some puns associated with their particular roster. And of course, the former Pirate pitcher, Bob Walk. But we'll go there. See how you are. Oh, man. There's still some more coming for Drew Locke. I, uh, I want to tease that. Play fake. Locke loads up. Kicked in incomplete off the hands of Jonathan Johnson, and he had him for a big game. Jonathan Johnson's a slot receiver. Likes to run intermediate and deep routes in the middle of the field. Misses one, hits him right in his hands, and he drops it. You wonder if the sun kind of caught him there. There's a break a little bit in the field. But again, drops a problem a week ago. Drop showing up here early today in another third and long situation for Missouri that gives Arkansas a chance. Lock almost throws another pick. That's tipped and incomplete. And Aguim got his hands on it. It would have been a pick six for McTelvin Aguim, who made all the plays last week. Here he is right here off the right side. He reads it and then bails and drops and basically turns into a linebacker. How about that for being heads up? He looked right into the sun as well. I'm telling you, he looked right into the sun and lost sight of the football. And by the way, on this punt, Andre Tolliver is back. He's been looking in the sun as well. As my old coach used to say, it's been there a billion years. <laughs> but Tony, one of the nation's best punters, Tolliver backs up, makes the grab at the 38. Tolliver has room on Ray Tolliver inside the 40, inside the 30. What a senior day for on Ray Tolliver. An interception to set up a touchdown. And now Tolliver with a huge return in the punt game. There's a Missouri Tiger down. But there are no flags down, so this will stand for Andre Tolliver as we check on the injured player for Mizzou. Looks like Jamal Brooks is being tended to by the training staff. So as they tend to Jamal Brooks, we step aside. It's a great block by Grant Morgan there. Did a great getting up on the up. We did not step aside. We're still here. I was just saying it was a great block by Grant Morgan on that play to get himself in position where it was not going to be a block in the back and to uh, free the uh, returner down that sideline. Well, all three of us are married up here, and we've all respectively outkicked our own coverages. <laughs> That's what it looks like on the football field. 33-yard return for Tolliver. Williams will take it on the left side. Williams with a big push, shoving his way forward inside the 20. David Williams, the former South Carolina Gamecock, delivering hits as he takes it into the red zone. This is great run by David Williams, and watch him make his pullers right. You have to have patience as a ball carrier. You can see he makes that block right. Offensive linemen don't know where the running back is. They're just trying to cover up those dark shirts. Nine times out of ten, we're giving up athleticism to the defender, and that's where the running back can help us by setting up our blocks and bringing the defender to us. Great job there. Longest run of the day for Arkansas. 13 yards. He'll give it to Williams again. Shaking his way inside the 10. Reaching in. Touchdown. David Williams carries the load and carries the pigskin for another Arkansas touchdown. Well, we talked about getting some rushing yardage. Danny Nos has got to be giddy about the way things are turning right here with the ability to churn it out on the ground, explosive plays. And you can say what you want about this Arkansas team and whether Brett Bielema will be back next year, but this team is still fighting for their head coach. That was a run blitz that time by Therese Hall. He came off the edge. Missouri likes to be aggressive. We talked about that feast or famine. That's a situation where the run blitz costs him a touchdown. Leopard for the PAT. So Tolliver sets it up. And in two plays, both of them rushes by David Williams. The Razorbacks are back in the end zone, 21-7. Everything you can and really be a team here, guys. And John, as we talked about all week and saw it displayed last week, despite all the turmoil around Arkansas, round three, 
Slips out to the 18. Here comes a flag. Only being the Razorbacks are still playing hard, especially the seniors. And this is what you expect every single season. Brett Bielema has been here in Fayetteville, getting a little chippy inside there. This is a proud program. Regardless of what their record is or how they've been playing, there's a lot of pride in this program. They liked Jeff Long, the athletic director. They certainly like Brett Bielema as a head coach. And the way that they're playing early on in this game with one of the brightest stories in college football on the turnaround with Missouri. Early return, illegal block of the back. 15 of the receiving team. Half the distance to the goal line. First down. It's, it's been impressive. And here's take a look at the touchdown. Defense is always about gap integrity, right? That's the gaps that these guys are supposed to have. But go ahead and roll it. And I'll keep your eye on 99, the nose tackle. Right there, he peeks in a gap that's not his. And that's what allows Williams to be able to shake the safety in the hole and get another touchdown down in the red zone. That run game, Rick, that Bielema told us was critical to keeping them balanced is showing up. And that has been the story of the resurgence of Missouri in this last five games is the accountability. Perry Odom told us a story, he went to a safety during practice and said, hey, look behind you. What's, what do you see? He says, nothing, coach. He says, exactly. You're the last line. Stay back. Everybody's got to do what their job tells them to do. Last time Mizzou was backed up, they went on a 92-yard touchdown drive. Let's see if they can get it rolling again as Witter takes it across the 10. Another solid gain on first down for Ish Witter. And that's the counter game that they like to run. They will run some quarterback keep slice off of this where Drew Locke's legs will come into effect as well. So gap integrity for both of these defenses, particularly against the run and the styles that they do, is important. Arkansas has done well except for the one big run they gave up because they didn't keep contained and set the outside edge, which is crucial to good defensive line. Lock will hand again. Winner on second and five. This drive started at their own eight. The touchdown drive for Missouri started at their own eight. Watching Jamon Moore down here waving over to the sideline. There's, <laughs> there's individual signalers to all the different components of the dealer's choice offense. Everybody's getting a signal so that they can go that much faster. Seconds ticking away at the end of the first. Missouri will see if they want to get it off. It'll be third and one for Missouri when we come back to start the second. 21-7, Bielema's Razorbacks. Lead it early. <laughs> their destiny in their own hands. Miami obviously has to beat Clemson in the ACC title game. Third and one, Witter picks it up easily. Here come a couple flags. It also means that the ACC is not likely to have two teams in the college football playoff. Certainly opens the door, both Rick and I think, for Ohio State. I'd love it if it did for Notre Dame, but without Personal that 13. Face pass. Defense, number eight, 15 yard penalty. First down. It's on Dijon Harris. And another untimely penalty for Arkansas. Sticks that big left arm out there. Getting on Ish Witter. But again, I think I would like that it would open the door for my alma mater, Notre Dame. They've got a Stanford team. They've got to whip them big. But without a conference championship game, that 13th data point is going to be really hard for the Irish to advance. Lock will hand off. Witter driving the would-be tackler Richardson. He takes it for a ride. Rick, are you surprised that we're seeing Missouri commit so much to the run and not taking more deep shots here? To the single receiver side, I see so much air. I cannot believe they're not taking advantage of the matchup outside. It's almost like they're trying to lull them to sleep. We fully expected, particularly with back end of Arkansas, that there would be a lot more deep shots taken on Look that. to the top of the screen right here is case, case in point. I mean, that is one on one. There's zero coverage on his side of the field. There's no safety help. But they run it again into the heavy box ish winner. We all thought coming into this game that Arkansas was going to play keep away, that their best defense was going to be an offense that kept Missouri's quick scoring, high flying offense on the sideline. But Missouri, by doing this, is allowing Arkansas's defense to rest. And I just don't know with the way that this game's going that that's in their best interest. But you have to give them credit for being patient. Now watch the corners get up into the faces of these outside receivers on third down, trying to steal a series here. Saw Paul Rhodes, Arkansas defensive coordinator. Third and three, did he get back? No flat, now there it comes. Lock, three play, deep shot, inside the 15, touchdown, Mizzou, Emmanuel Hall. Drew Lock 
is starting to master the free play. Takes the shot over the top for a 55-yard touchdown, assuming that's Outside. offsides, and it is. Defense. Number 35, penalty is declined. Touchdown. I mean, that was perfectly executed on the free play. He is the Aaron Rodgers of college football right now. He has the cadence, and right now we don't have a full house here so that you can hear out there. Usually when you're a road team, you have to go with a silent count. Not today. They're barking out the signals. He gets the uh, defensive end to jump. He knows he's offsides, takes the shot, Aaron. And even job. though it's a free play, but you have to play discipline defensively, even if you see your guy jump off. This Missouri offense did this exact thing to Vandy a week ago. Second 92-yard touchdown drive and lock with TD pass number 39 is now two away from owning the SEC single season record. Drops it to Hall and Mizzou. Quick strike makes it a one TD game again. 12 and this one taking advantage of the offsides penalty. Well, here they are down here at the bottom, but when the player jumps offside, keep your eye on Curl. He peeks inside right there to see what happens. Boom. And that little bit of a delay there takes his eyes where it should be, and it costs him a touchdown. Doesn't get his hands on the receiver, and Emmanuel Hall is off to the races. Emmanuel Hall, by the way, fellas, is number two in the country with guys over 30 catches in yards per reception. Well over 22. And that'll actually boost that number. I would say that number is going up. Zoo's 21st play of 50 plus, most in the FBS. Warren brings it across the 15. There are flags down as Warren takes it across the 20. And I say flags. I mean, below the block waist. Got to take cover. I got that number. <laughs> Below the waist got? block is what I meant to say. Yeah, Hub Hubert Owens has a false start on the mic there. Got to, got to make sure we get the... <laughs> we all had too much turkey. Make sure we get the numbers straight. <laughs> My soup cooler's getting away sometimes too, Rick. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Doing the return. Illegal block in the back. Receiving team. Half the distance to the goal. First down. So the Razorbacks take it back to the five-yard line. Time now for our... Fly. Trivia question. Missouri quarterback Drew Luck thrown three plus passing touchdowns seven straight games. Who was the last SEC quarterback to accomplish this feat? We peaked. So I, I had this one. I'm, I, I'm, I'm just bragging. I had I, this one. I don't know. I'm hoping that I get some credit for finally knowing one of the trivia questions <laughs> oh, you all have? season long. I got okay. this one on the first guess. You guys got it from what I understand a couple, two or three guesses in. Unbalanced formation. Behind Austin Allen on his senior day. A handoff to Whaley and A.J. Logan makes a stop. Job now with CBSSports.com. You can get the CBS Sports app today. That was a nice first down run there. Rick called out the unbalanced formation. That means moving an offensive lineman from one side, in that case from the left over to the right, to get a better chance with bigger people on that side at work. Allen, quick hitter. It's tipped and incomplete. That was a floater. Frazier got a hand on it, and Lee nearly got the pick. And it's interesting, there's a shadow break right there that's going to make the vision for the wide receiver on that quick out hard to see. But Frazier had seven and a half sacks a year ago. Pass rushers are tied. If you can't get to the quarterback, get your hands up in the throwing lanes. He just turned into a defensive back right there. It looked like he has a pretty good vertical jump, too. Yeah, That's get up, Marcel right Frazier. There. Has a sack, and that pass break up. The fourth, third, and six. Threw an inside slant last time in a similar circumstance. Here's Allen on the roll from the goal line. Frazier chasing, fires it incomplete. Intended for Stewart. And it was again Marcel Frazier bearing down on Austin Allen. Nice job by the Tiger defense. This this play took too long. Austin Allen had his flat breaking uh, receiver open, but he had to keep extending the play to get a throwing lane. That's something Missouri's so good at. Saw Lee and 
Frazier there bearing down on him. But hey, that's a good decision. He tried, didn't try to force the football in there. He's going to punt it away, but Missouri's going to have very good field position potential. First three now for Arkansas. Johnson to Floyd makes the grab with a fair catch at the 47. So the Tigers on the plus side. They were down by two touchdowns for the first time during the winning streak. Now it's a one score game. Give the football back to Locke. He continues to progress. Junior, but talk about Drew Locke coming out. Big decision ahead for him. Play fake. Locke steps up, delivers another deep ball. Incomplete. Intended for Hall, and it's knocked away by Ramirez. We talked about Santos Ramirez in the opening lineups. That's the second time we've seen these deep crossing routes where a safety's made a play on the ball or a defensive back. Ramirez turns and runs. He stays deeper than the deepest, and actually, I think prevents what could have been another touchdown reception on a well-thrown ball to Emmanuel Hall. Ramirez has stepped up big. A lot of work between his sophomore and junior years. As who slows down after the incompletion. Lock quick hitter. Sips it to the outside. Nate Brown. Down, he down. was down at the 40, I think 39. This is vintage dealer's choice right here. It looks as if he's dealing from the bottom of the deck as he takes the ball from the running back's belly and whips it out there, stealing five yards. Sets up third and four. Straight ahead, Roundtree with a good push. Snap it in a hurry, give it to Roundtree, and he has just enough. Briston Gidry on the stop, but Roundtree moves the chains. And Rick, earlier you mentioned about Missouri playing left and right wide receivers with the speed and the tempo that they do what advantage does that give them? Well, it, obviously it's to line up quicker so that the tempo can be where they want it But it also has an advantage of running the same route all the time if you're always on the right or always on the left Peyton Manning had receivers Marvin uh, Harrison and Reggie Wayne always to one side Long or the guard. other it, and it worked Offense. unbelievably well 75 five yard penalty first down and Mizzou slows down and gets a false start on that offensive line that has no seniors. So officially, Dino Babers in Syracuse is the fastest offense. That's seconds between plays. Mizzou second, I'd like to say fastest offense, but been more effective than Syracuse's, except for the Clemson. We go back in history, they're both from the same family. First and 15, round three again. Number two committed to the run. Unbelievable. So. Finishing that thought, Dino Babers was with Art Riles at Baylor before taking off and becoming a head coach. And, and Josh Heupel was at Oklahoma where Mike Leach was, and Mike Leach then went to Texas Tech. All these guys, had, and, and Riles was on his staff. Lock fakes it on second and long. Late pressure coming, released. Moore couldn't hold it. Gmon Moore on the outside. What would have been a first down makes it third and long. It's interesting. You wonder if it's the pace of the balls that Drew Lock throws, but this is a catch that Moore has to be able to make. It's a little bit high, and Rick, when I've seen him miss, I see him miss high at times, particularly on the outside edges here. It's a howitzer, boys. It's not a gun. It's a howitzer. Another drop, makes it third and long. Pressure picked up. Locke tries to scramble and now heaves it to the end zone incomplete. Off the hand of Callaway and Locke threw a dangerous ball to the end zone. It was some backside pressure from the left side that pushed him out of this pocket. Nice job, but he throws it without being able to step into it. He actually overthrows it, which allows Cleveland Callaway to get his hand on it. But it looked like Brown kind of throttled down, and there was some miscommunication there. But the net result is that Missouri, with good field position, can't capitalize on it. And Missouri's going to, or Arkansas going to get this ball back. But Tony hangs it high. Tolliver, fair catch. Has enough to make the grab just inside the 15-yard line. Razorbacks hanging on to the lead. The offensive coordinator for the Razorbacks said they needed to find and take a look at these first five possessions. That big play strike ability's been on point. A week ago when we came to do the Mississippi State game, Dan Enos was lamenting the lack of explosive plays Why Austin Allen was out of the lineup. Now that he's back, they're starting to come back again. And Enos couldn't be happier. 
Allen third game back with the shoulder injury. Play action. On the roll. Austin Allen flings Copley across the 40-yard line. Patton has the grab and takes it to near midfield. Jeremy Patton, the junior tight end from Indianapolis. Oh, those little sneaky buggers. Here he is back here on the back side of the ball. He's going to sneak his way out and get up in here. Watch the flow. Just does a nice job of selling the route. By the time he's picked up, it's another huge game through the air for the Razorbacks. 33 on this one to Patton. Williams will take the handoff. He is wrapped up and dropped for loss. All leading the way. We check in with Adam. Carter, the war on I-4 is underway. Winner takes the American East Division. South Florida's quarterback and leading rusher, Quinton Flowers, going in for the score. And Telling Shaquan Burkett there's never a bad month for wakeboarding in Florida. Undefeated UCF has since scored at seven apiece first quarter. That was, that was Earl Campbell-esque with the jersey and dragon it almost tore off. It was a nice underwear commercial to me. <laughs> <laughs> the Bulls can close out their season with a big one over the Knights. Razorbacks sitting at four and seven postseason very unlikely. Allen Chase from behind drop. This time Jordan Harold on the stop. Uh, will be third and long. Looked like Allen got back to the line of scrimmage. Well credit great coverage on the back end by Missouri to allow its defensive rush to get home. Brandon Allen Rick you talked about him not holding on to the ball too long and getting rid of it but everybody's covered here. There's nowhere for him to be able to throw the football. So he just pulls it down and tries to make something out of nothing. In a flat curl route, though, you have to anticipate that receiver uh, coming open. you got to let that ball go. He does do a good job getting closer to the line of scrimmage, though, minimizing the sack. High backfield on third and long. So Max protect. Allen releases it. It's caught Dion Stewart converting on third and long. Another big one in the pass game for the Razorbacks. Dion Stewart, it's another gain of 33. The second 33-yard completion on the drive. Here he is right here. He comes into motion, Rick. Scissors route. You're going to get an outside re releasing, and he's going to run the post, and here comes the corner underneath him. Very difficult on the safety. Beautiful throw by Austin Allen. Dan Enos got to be giddy that he's got his signal caller back. Four plays of 30 plus. So they had 221 versus Mississippi State. Already passed it today. Williams will take it into the end zone again. Touchdown. His second TD of the day for the senior from Philly. It goes for 22. And all of a sudden, the explosive big play. Arkansas Razorbacks are racking up the points to close out 2017. This is just a pen and pull scheme to the play side where the center pulls out in space, taking advantage of angles. They crease the inside of that defense. Once again, gap integrity breaking down for the Tigers. That PAT is barely good. So on that drive alone for Arkansas, an offense that has failed to produce big plays in 2017. Two plays that go 30 plus, and then Williams takes it in from 22, and Arkansas by two TDs again. It's like brisket you ordered a couple nights ago. <laughs> I had all four food meat groups last night, that's for sure. Make sure that uh, is well brined. Roundtree brings it from inside the five, and Roundtree across the 20 yard line. So, Drew Locke climbing the. TD, single season record. Missouri, three plus passing TDs, seven straight games. Last SEC quarterback to accomplish this feat. One of the sports great quarterbacks and good guys, Danny Werfel at Florida. In the fun and gun offense with Steve Spurrier. There's the old coach, old ball coach. I Head say. ball coach, head, head ball, ball coach. coach. Yeah, he doesn't like that old. You're exactly <laughs> right. The HBC. What a combination those two were, man. Kind of taking the SEC by storm with that fun and gun. Boys, I'll tell you right now, if Danny Werfel were a coach, he'd already been hired at Florida. Wow. As in, he has the ability to rally that. He was that kind of leader. He was that kind of guy. This winner will take the handoff. Winner's spinning. We have some great Werfel Spurrier stories from our buddy James, B James Bates, none of which we will share on the air. <laughs> Being employed is nice. Isn't right, it? right, right.
So second and four is Locke and Witter carry the Mizzou offense. Yes, Witter, that's his 16th carry of the first half. Grant Morgan makes the stop. This, this is an important third down right here for Missouri. One of the things, downsides, if there is any for up-tempo offenses, is putting your defense back on the field too quickly. Down by two touchdowns again. During the winning streak, they have not trailed by two touchdowns. They trailed by 14 earlier, answered with a touchdown. Arkansas has them down by two TDs again. It's clear to me, though, that even running up tempo, Missouri's being patient right now. Lock, links to the outside. First and 10, that is complete. It's Jamon Moore's side of the field. This has been available all game long as they look and say dealer's choice offense. Slot receivers down here just walking down, single receiver into the boundary. Drew Lock getting signals, and he has the opportunity to choose anyway. Take it. Lock. Hit as he throws from behind, deep shot, Hall pulls it in, and touchdown! Emmanuel Hall over the top again. This time, 56 yards, and Drew Locke has TD pass number 40. I would say yards per catch for Emmanuel Hall are gonna keep going up there, Carter. It's a beautiful deep ball, and this is why, again, we talk about the big arm of Drew Locke. He just flat puts this on the money. This ball travels somewhere around 60, 65 yards in the air. Mm. And he felt the pressure, too. There was some pressure late backside, but he stood in there tall. And Cameron Curl, the cornerback, a true freshman, getting burned for another deep touchdown. He kind of peeked up and looked back at the ball, which stopped his momentum, which is why that last-minute separation got there. Oh, well, we got that trailing by two TD note in. <laughs> and we had to get it in a hurry because Mizzou wipes away the two TD lead. And Drew Locke is just one TD pass away from owning the SEC single season record. Well, Drew Locke now with 40, tied with Andre Woodson and the single season school record. Again, Chase Daniel had that in the Big 12 days. Now SEC days. Locke is only a junior. And more importantly for the Tigers right now, he's pulled them within a touchdown, 28-21. Touchback will bring it out to the 25 for Arkansas. And a one-score game again. Would you say that this Missouri offense is locked and loaded? Here oh, we go. Here we go. Rick's there, on the board. There's, there's, one, there's one coming I'm really <laughs> pulling for. I'm really pulling for. Well, now it's time for Arkansas to lock in. They've got six and a half minutes left. All three of their timeouts, so they can run their normal offense. They've been a little bit of a quick score team today themselves with some big runs. This is an important drive for them. Out of the eye to the outside, that is. This is what we call a oh, now route. Yeah. This is this. You got it. You got a run play called there, and they just toss it out. We just go back, Dawson Allen. One of the things you have to stop if you're going to stop a Razorback offense are throwbacks. Beautiful throw right here. The scissors throw finds Deion Stewart out there. Beautiful. And then David Williams. He's been red hot. Red hot. Eight carries, 75 yards a week ago. Six carries, 54 yards, and two touchdowns today. And Austin Allen, that short to intermediate, some deep games, seven to ten today is pretty hot as well. Play action again. Austin Allen loads up, and it is taunted and complete. Cheryl saved the touchdown. Looking for Jordan Jones on the post again. Well, Rick, they say that this is a game of inches. Anthony Sherrill saves a touchdown here. Quarters coverage again here. The backside safety tries to get there, and he does, but he doesn't get there. Oh. I don't know if it was the sun or the obscure by the ball just barely missing his hand. Sherrill's never touches it. It was the sun, but it was enough to be able to distract Jordan Jones. I don't go. think 22 ever got his hands on it. I'm going to go back to Homer Smith. It's been there a billion years. <laughs> Easier said than done. I mean, in the first quarter, Missouri had a couple of huge drops because of the way it's coming in here at Razorback Stadium. And now Arkansas's turn. Third and 11. Allen scrambles, tosses, incomplete. He was looking for Patton and is knocked away by Cam Hilton, the junior from St. Louis, as Allen took a big pop. Really nice spike. Hilton being physical, but keep your eye on Austin Allen. Coaches say he's tough, maybe sometimes too tough, but I love it when you have a quarterback that can sit in the pocket and willing to take a shot. But again, 
This is not the style of offense that you want to be punting the football away given a short field with five and a half minutes left when you were up by 14 points a couple minutes ago. We just talked about how Missouri had to get that first down to protect their defense. Now three and out Arkansas puts their defense back out on the field right back. Johnson just does get it away. Celebrate 60 years of Grammy performances with never before told backstage stories from the stars. Grammy's greatest stories, a 60th anniversary special. New tonight at 9, 8 central, only CBS. I want to hear the Bob Dylan story about the guy who jumped on stage with him, time out of mind. Remember that one? We he had, he had the, I believe it was Love Bomb painted on his shirt. <laughs> I'm going to take your word for it. No, he's painted on his chest. Yeah, that's the Grammy story I want to hear. And moving on. <laughs> <laughs> cricket, cricket. From cricket. the 45, it's Mizzou football. Drew Locke, TD drive last time in a hurry, just five plays. There it is again. Fake it, throw it complete. Ogui Boonham, the red shirt freshman tight end who has been huge for Mizzou. He came in as a wide receiver and apparently was going back for seconds in the training table because he's turned into a pretty big and nice tight end. But on 40 pounds. Lock zips it, complete to the outside. Team on more inside the 25. Moore fights to the 22. And this is what Missouri is so good at. We have a Arkansas player down, but just a nice comeback. And look at the arm strength, the ball perfectly thrown to Jamon Moore. DeAndre Coley's down for Arkansas. I was in there on the stop with Andre Tolliver. We saw Coley go down and come back last week in the Mississippi State game. And we will step aside as they tend to DeAndre Coley. Coley jogging back to the Arkansas sideline. First and 10 Mizzou after Jamon Moore. Makes the grab, taking him to the 22. 18-yard grab there for Moore. Already has four catches in the game. And I think at this position on the field, with it being shorter, this works to Arkansas's advantage to try and limit some of those explosive plays. Winner just inside the 20-yard line. Have another injured Razorback. It's... Yeah, it's Aguim who's down. McTelvin Aguim, a sophomore defensive end who's been huge the last couple of games for the Razorbacks. And Aguim now helped off by the Arkansas training staff. So play before was Coley going down. And now McTelvin Aguim. The two forced fumbles, one of them leading to the touchdown last week. Huge, huge game. And these are back-to-back -back plays with... Arkansas defenders going down. This is not the situation you want a McTelvin a game to come down, but maybe the silver lining is your defense gets a chance to catch its breath. Trying to see what happened to the young man. Hole replaces him it in. Quick snap. Here's another flag. Here's another free play. Back shoulder incomplete. Boy, boy the Tigers, I mean, Rick, you talked about it. I mean, it's uh, Aaron Rodgers S the way they're getting these free plays rolling. And it becomes Offside. one of the defense. Number 10, five yard, number 10, second down. Quarterbacks get to do all sorts of things, right? They read coverages, but when you can do this, this, this becomes something you just smile about because it's a free shot. He immediately goes for the touchdown. We saw a touchdown pass earlier, and that was within an eyelash of being a touchdown on the back shoulder throw. And I thought it was a nice job by Tolliver that time, staying disciplined and not giving up on the play. Give it to Witter again. Easily picking up the first down after the offsides penalty. Witter takes it to the 10. Harris on the stop. Deep down here in the red zone, keep your eye on the tight end, Albert Okawabunum, who's a nice big target. He likes to run corner routes. He scored a touchdown a week ago. Here he is at the bottom on the hash as they run the football. Michael Fink and toss it to him. There's a touchdown. You mean that guy, Aaron? That one, 81. <laughs> His 10th touchdown grab of his freshman year. And it's TD pass number three for Drew Luck, giving him the single season SEC passing touchdown record. And pulling Mizzou within a point of tying the Razorbacks in a high scoring action packed first half.
And before his senior year, Drew Locke has a major SEC record all his own. He now owns the single season passing touchdown record in SEC history. Eight straight games with three plus. Locke moves past Woodson after moving past Werfel. With apologies to Tony Orlando and Don, Locke three times in the end zone if you love me. Come on, sing it with me, Carter. I'm a little sick. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness, what an offense. What Locked an offense. Loaded. Here he is right here. He's just going to act like he's blocking and he's going to sneak out on the backside. Okaway Boonham, just such a receiving threat. You see the linebackers get sucked up. Everybody bites on the play action and that's the benefit of committing to the run that Missouri's done for this first two quarters. He came into this game with 20 catches. Nine were for touchdowns. Is that good? I think that's a high ratio. And now three catches in this game, one touchdown. So let's see, that makes it 23 catches, 10, 10 of touchdowns. them touchdowns. Right. And that moves him past his teammate, Jamon Moore. For now. From inside the five, Warren takes a big pop, falls forward to the 23-yard line. Tied at 28 with 4.03 to go before the break. Already been a good day for Drew Locke. Game tied 28. Coming up, stay tuned for the Geico Halftime Report. Adam Zucker, Brian Jones, and Houston Nutt. Already the big upset in college football today with Pitt over Miami. Shaking up the college football playoff picture. It's important now that Dan Enos and Brett Bielema concoct a plan that can eat the rest of this clock in the first half, save that defense, and hopefully put some points on the board. A couple first downs is what they need to focus on to do that. Hammonds will take it on the draw. Hammonds takes a big pop. That's the tough tackling corner to Marcus Acey. Hammonds was a wide receiver. They moved him into running back because of injuries, which has been the kind of the story of the Arkansas season. He had some big games, but uh, he has this proclivity to run and get the ball outside. You can see him trying to do that again there. Last two minus one rushing yards for Hammonds. And so that his first carry of today. It's officially four. Austin Allen with Stewart in motion. Play action. Toss it back. Incomplete. It was intended for Hammonds. And Jordan Harold lays the lick on Austin Allen. Allen took a huge shot right there and was really slow to get up. He's battled an injury in his right shoulder, his throwing arm earlier on in the season. And that defensive line, just a little hip check right there. But you see he kind of winces in pain and rolls over as he took a shot to his midsection. Not Big huge, down. but when you're as banged up as Austin Allen Big is. Big down here for the Razorbacks. All matters. Toughness never in question. Austin Allen on third and six. Loads up, takes another hit as he delivers it deep. But... Arm punt. Yep, it is intercepted. Picked off. Sparks has it on the deep shot on third and six. But, A.T., to your point, that's a that's literally a toss-up. That's sitting on the tee box, hitting into the tree, and it kicks out into the middle of the fairway, I guess. Is that a good miss? Quarterbacks prefer to call it a 50-50 ball. Okay. But he gets hit. This offensive line is the worst in the SEC. 35 sacks allowed and counting. You like the decision to go for it, and credit Sparks for tracking that football right over his shoulder, becoming a receiver himself. Tremendous ball skills on that with that ball that was thrown a little bit to the outside of Jones. That was a great grab. We've seen the Sunfield affect everything, not Sparks. Block, run pass option, finds Jamon Moore on the edge. See, Carter, how you are? The RPO, the run pass option for Missouri the last five games, it's been really potent offense. Ooh. Oh, my God. This, we still haven't gotten to the lock one that I'm really looking forward to. I'm afraid to join this game. It's 28-28, boys. We got a good one. And there's Winter. Winter lost his mouthpiece but hung on to the football. Third down coming. Drake Greenlaw leads the charge along with Dijon Harris. I know it's been a rough year for Arkansas, but Paul Rhodes' unit has played pretty dang well up front in the front seven. They're being efficient. But this is where Missouri on third down can be so dangerous with this receiving core. 
Pressure coming. Drew him off sides again. Now the multiple flags down. It was Greenlaw coming. Offsides, and we'll get the explanation. Offsides of first down. Defense. Number 23, five-yard penalty. He's up for the penalty at the first down. The reason they stopped play here is he had a direct line to the quarterback. They thought the quarterback was in jeopardy, and so they stopped play. He also made contact with two of the offensive linemen, but, man, another costly penalty in a critical situation for Arkansas. Well, that's been a strength for Arkansas, but not in this first half. Helping Mizzou come back from two touchdowns down. Witter with his 21st carry of the first half. They're going to get their place. This, this hypo speed offense is going to get their place. They're on pace for 100. 48 in the first half by Mizzou. So this is. Part of Missouri's game plan, have some first down success, dink and dunk, and then hit some play action up over the top. Clock is winding down now, time starting to become a factor. Clock fakes it, flings it to the outside, Collins. Diving forward, move the chains. Didn't look like he got out of bounds there. They'll get this thing set up. Missouri's got two timeouts left, plenty of time. Probably want to save one of those timeouts for a field goal opportunity. So you're operating with one right now. Winding on the ready for play. Lock flings to the outside, tipped in. Moore couldn't haul it in. Moore's upset with himself because he had that. And he should be upset. He was trying to make something before he had the ability to be able to secure the football. That's just a concentration drop in a critical situation. When you're on the road, you got to make that catch. What happens to receivers is they think about making their first move knowing that corner's behind him and take their eyes just for a moment off the ball. Take it again. Look, crossed by Gidry. And now with a minute 16, we'll see how both Missouri and Arkansas play the timeouts heading into third and long. Just the ends collapsing on both sides, Rick. I would say they'll play it close to the best right here. You know how potent this offense is, so I don't think Arkansas is going to use one here. And for Missouri right now, given that it's third and 12, they're happy letting the clock run right here as well. And that's the absolute worst thing that can happen in a two-minute situation is to take a sack. Cost you time and yardage. So now the Tigers looking to bleed some clock. Prior to third and long. Lock. Time to throw. Deep shot. Incomplete. Intended for Collins. Here comes a flag. Oh, no. So unnecessary. They're going to call Arkansas for a pass interference. This ball had no chance of being caught. There's another flag here back in the backfield. We'll wait and see what that one means. Paul Rhodes is irate. There were two fouls on the play, one by each team. Personal foul, illegal hands to the face. Offense, number 75. Pass interference, defense, number one. Those penalties offset, third down. I disagree with the pass interference call. Chevin Calloway turned around and looked for the ball right before he got there. And to Rick's point, I don't know if it was catchable to begin with. Right there, he turns for the ball. He does put his hands on him. You can't do that, Aaron. That's illegal. <laughs> and it looks as if it causes him to go to the ground. But again, the ball would not have been caught. So two over with 37 seconds. Third and long again. Expect Mizzou to take another deep shot. Here's Locke. Why not go right back to it? This one is caught. What a grab. Collins holds it in right in front of Callaway. They go right back to the same play. Get 31 if it stands. It, it Even looking at as, the replay right there, it's hard to see. It looks as if his left foot is in. They've got to take a look at this. And they will. Ruling on the field is a completed pass for a first down. The previous play is under further review. So up to replay official Jack Childress and back to Birmingham at the SEC offices to see if there's a put down with possession. I, I, man, there's no question Collins has his hands on the ball with his right foot on the ground. But that right hand isn't even on the ball. He comes over and puts it in his left hand. Man, that is close. Where, where they deem him having possession will determine this. 
the field is confirmed. First down. Unbelievable catch. And how about the call to go right back to the same play? 50-50 balls. They're basically saying, hey, we've got to put a ball up there. We're going to try to get ourselves into the scoring zone. Now they're at the 25-yard line and giving him a chance to make a 50-50 throw. And how about Drew Locke and the confidence he has in his receivers and the location of that ball so his guy can get it on? We talked earlier about the NFL and Drew Locke, his potential at the next level. That's what you have to do at the next level. Missouri used one timeout early. Neither team has taken one since. Lock loads up to the end zone. Moore couldn't haul it in. Incomplete with 22 seconds. Jamon Moore got two hands. Couldn't bring it in. And you see Andre Tolliver's in coverage. This should have been a touchdown. He goes up and gets it. But Andre Tolliver flashes his hand up there. And you wonder if that kind of breaks the concentration of Jamon Moore. But I got to say, guys, Jamon Moore's hands are not consistent. I'm nitpicking here, but again, that ball for me should have been thrown earlier with more air, so Moore has time to make the play. He just drives throws. Unique ability. So now it's second down. Lock zips it incomplete. Looked like that was busted somehow, intended for Kendall Blanton. Third down, 17 seconds, one more shot, and then it will be Tucker McCann, who's been a solid field goal kicker for Mizzou this year. Still have both their timeouts, so it doesn't matter if they get this ball at or near the sideline. They can, they can use the whole field. It'd be a 42-yarder from here. That's within McCann's range. 11 pass touchdowns on third down by Drew Locke this season. Second best flag flag down another flag down on the field. My goodness. Substitution infraction offense number six. Oh. What's Five happening for you Rick? Third down. As a head coach you can't be happy with that. Well we just talked about field goal kickers in range five yards. It's it's like it's taking another club out of your bag, right? What well, was a wedge shot? Now it's, you know, a nine iron. You, you just don't want to do that to kickers. Win can be tricky, but for right now here at Razorback Stadium, right now they have the win. Now, Jamon Moore is going to sub out prior to this third and 15. He just asked out. Nate Brown takes over at the top of the screen at that far wide receiver for third and 15. They're going to hand off. So here's Witter. Turns a quarter to 25. Gets out of bounds inside the 20 with 11 seconds. No timeout needed. Upper, set up for the field goal. A for percentage the play. You're running into the boundary. You know you can get to the sideline. Again, they had plenty of timeouts. If their cut it was required to go back inside, Witter has been a consistent player. They give themselves a nice shot. Probably now a 30, what, uh, 36 yard field goal. Maybe 37 as 37 they line it up. Looks with like. Seven and a half back. 37-yard field goal. Arkansas gets the ball back to start the second half, so this is a win for their defense to force this field goal. McCann's 37-yarder is good, giving Missouri the lead. They trail 21-7 after one. Seven seconds left in the half. Tigers on top. I think Barry Odom has an opportunity to do the same thing for the Missouri Tigers. We talked to Drew Locke about, all right, what's the difference between a, a motivational thing that works for a coach and doesn't? He says, we all believe wholeheartedly in what Barry Odom tells us because we hear it with emotion every day. So when it comes out in press conference or anything else, we know it's true. He wore the same uniform. And that will be the end of the half. So Missouri, who had not trailed by two touchdowns, they're in the five-game winning streak. They trail by two touchdowns twice in the first half, but lead it at the break, 31-28. 650 kill goal by Missouri. Makes it a three-point game with our producer, Scott Brandwine, director, Mark Grant, Booth Crew, Wade Robinson, oh John Tobias, and yeah, that's going to be an easy flag. Big time. Yeah, Rick, you saw it immediately. This is going to be probably targeting Mm. or some variation of it because this almost looks like a defenseless player. 
Some will look at this and call this football. I call this needless. No place for it in our game. Uh, we already saw a couple dust-ups in the first half. This is going to uh, make this even more contentious in the second half. We are in a in a stadium that's not full, right, guys? You can hear these guys, these sidelines, yelling back and forth at one another right now. Personal foul, targeting. Number 29 on the receiving team. 15-yard penalty, first down. Derek Munson called for targeting on the kick. I mean, this is, yeah, and, and sure enough, it's already getting chippy. This is... Yikes. This is ugly, and now it's getting ugly on the field between the two teams. Hubert Owens and his crew are having to step in. That's the definition of targeting. Yeah. That kid's just running down. There's no need. This is what you see in film study, and you're taking a shot, and you don't need to take the shot. So you're going to replay to confirm this is targeting, but that, I mean, that's... That's and, it. And what he does is he drops his head and launches right before he makes contact. Those are the high indicators for targeting that officials look for. You applaud aggression. That's what this game is built upon. But you have to be smart. And from what we're learning about head injuries, these are the exact sort of plays we're trying to remove from the game so it stays that way. That's exactly right. I mean, that that that's the type of play that is why the targeting rule comes into effect. And kickoffs or always cited as one of the most dangerous plays usually on the other end because of big collisions not not a targeting uh, defenseless as soon as the ball is in the air there will be a question as to whether that youngster could defend himself if he was a defenseless player right there because he is running straight ahead but as you're watching the kick take place and making sure you're on side you're the last thing you're expecting is a member of the kick return team running at you and this is just a violent collision that we need to take out of football. Targeting on the field stands. Number 29 has been disqualified. Rick, I want to know as a head coach when at the beginning of the second half, when now it's getting, it's beyond chippy. You got a dirty play to begin the second half. You have teams drawn back and forth. How do you approach this, especially with some difficult dynamics, especially on the Arkansas side? Well, it's confounding that you would go resort to that. The game's 31-28. It's been brilliantly played on both sides. To take that shot right there, which you know is going to be, in, in, in old football parlance, Aaron, a big hit, right? A big hit. You know it's going to be. Uh, I, I, I don't understand it, especially given where the Arkansas staff finds themselves right now. It's selfish. That's the bottom line. You want to be aggressive, but now you've taken away all the momentum, them getting the ball back in the second half. They're not going to get good field position, and you're losing a player who's a backup linebacker in the last regular season game, which is the last game for this Arkansas team. You just you felt any sort of momentum coming back out in the excitement in the second half kind of go away for a very selfish play. There's no need for it in this game, and Brett Bielema doesn't condone that from his players whatsoever. Fasten your seatbelts, boys. From the 25, first play of the second half. And it's back into the hands of Jordan Jones. Jones slips away. He looked like he was final up in the backfield. Slips away for a gain of nine before Sheryls finally brings him down. Well, we talked about Dan Enos wanting to get to the perimeter, just an end around, and that's the speed. He's making people miss. Rick, I don't know what you saw, but getting ready for this game on tape, open field tackling, one of the problems for Missouri. I agree with that. I expected a lot of condensed formations to try to force those uh, corners on the Missouri side of things to have to make tackles in this ballgame. Second and one with Jackson and Williams in the eye. Williams will take it and have enough for a first down. You talked about ball control. You saw the 55 plays from Missouri. So Arkansas trying to reestablish the run game and at least give the defense a chance. 
not just that, but this is the identity of this Arkansas team. The entire program is built around physicality and running the football. So when you remove that element from this program and from this offense, it affects everybody. I like this decision to get the run game going here early, but don't count out Allen's arm and some well-timed play action. Here's the play action, and here's Allen. Has to roll, has to toss, and it's incomplete. Intended for Stewart with Adam Sparks, who had the INT in the first half, knocking it away. Rick, you said that you wanted Austin Allen to pull the trigger a little bit more quickly. Well, he wanted to there, but he couldn't. It was good initial coverage, and then Stewart kept running and gave that play a chance at the end, but you really have to credit Adam Sparks doing a nice job of being in coverage right there breaking up that play he does a great job of catching up it was a double move and the ball was as you pointed out throwing a just a hair late Allen over his last six handing off Williams takes a big pop as he gets to the 45 we check with John well, I spoke with Brett Bielema at the half, and he said, look, we need to run the ball more. We are able to, but the reason why we're stalling out on our drives is because we abandoned it for some reason. So you are going to see them hand the ball off a lot more here in this second half. Defensively, he said, Drew Locke, the quarterback from Missouri, is doing a good job drawing us off sides on third downs. We're getting a penalty. We're giving him a free play, and it's resulted in a touchdown every time. He said our guys have to be conscious of that. Carter. So now it's third and four after Arkansas puts it. On the ground in the run game, back to the air. Allen pressure, stepping up and he's dropped. Terry Beckner Jr. gets the sack on third down. And Beckner fired up, fist pumping as he heads back to the Mizzou sideline. This time Missouri brings some pressure and there's just nowhere for Allen to go. That to me was a coverage sack. Demarcus Acey right there did a great job of c controlling the uh, receiver that was coming underneath that wanted to be open there for Allen. He had nowhere to go. Injured offensive lineman for Arkansas. That's the right tackle, Brian Wallace. It is a banged up, patched together offensive line for Arkansas. Ragnow has gone down. We saw Rodgers and Prohol both go down last week on this play. Yeah, they, Allen and the Razorback fans thought Beckner got away with the face mask, but it's Wallace who's on the deck now for the Razorbacks. He got away with one right there. Sure did. In our conversation with Brett Bielema this week, I mean, it's obviously tough times, and, and I think we're all in agreement. Brett Bielema's been nothing but frank and uh, remaining upbeat through everything right now with Arkansas. But his conversation talking about when he looks out there at the offensive line, that should have that's a face mask that was missed. But, I mean, it, it's just hard to find bodies right now for the Arkansas offensive line. There's been injuries. I mean, it started last year with Raleigh Williams, the SEC's leading, leading returning running back having a career-ending injury with a neck then it was Jared Cornelius then Frank Ragnow Austin Allen they just have too many injuries at too many key positions Johnson's punt goes out of bounds right around the 30 so Austin Allen and the Razorbacks fired up angry but now by three becomes a problem for the defense it's just a, such a great strategy because it's another variation of simply trying to attack the defense where they aim. Winner takes the handoff for his 23rd carry. Drew Locke with those three passing touchdowns in the first half, 41 on the year, setting the SEC single season record. I mean, how about this Witter, man? Oh, how about him? Here he goes again. Witter rolling across the Razorback at midfield. Down to the 50 by Ramirez. He's only 5'10, 200 pounds, but that's his 24th carry of the day, which ties the season lead for him that he had against tw uh, Tennessee. He is without question being a workhorse today and rising to the challenge. That's his longest run of the day, setting up the toss to Moore, pulls it in at the 25. So the Tigers start out running it. Moore and Tolliver are both slow getting up after that collision more still down from a zoo i cannot emphasize how pretty this throw is again i'd like more air if i were coaching him i'd say let's put it up in the air but in terms of just a laser it mm. is put on him like it was uh, i called it i used to call it a kindergarten ball pin it on his chest and yet gmon moore down from a zoo we step aside 
for Missouri. Andre Tolliver, like he got the hammies rolled out after he and Moore both go down. Jamon Moore twisted up. Keep our fingers crossed for him. So. Sometimes that scares you mm -hmm. as much as hurts you. So Moore has a helmet on, hoping to get back. Callaway replaces Andre Tolliver. First and ten. Witter again, and there's nothing there for Ish Witter this time. And grabbed by Moore for 26, his longest of the day. Just a simple inside zone where you try to get a hat on a hat and double team some of the down linemen up to the linebackers. But once again, Arkansas's defensive line doing a nice job getting penetration. Michael check to the sideline, play from offensive coordinator Josh Heupel. A lot of space up top if he wants to go one-on-one. -on -one. Instead, he'll fake it to Witter. Pressure, now lock, rolling, lock, tripped up and it drops. And it's Harris who gets the sack on Drew Lock. Dejon Harris just did an outstanding job in pursuit here of the quarterback. Because Locke was trying to make a big play. They call him Scooter. Now you know why. Now he did a nice job of taking on the block by Ishwitter, but that hustle is a perfect example, Rick, of how these guys are still playing their tails off for defensive coordinator Paul Rose, but more importantly, Brett Bielen. Jamon Moore and Andre Tolliver both back out there for third down after the third sack by the Arkansas D. Lay clock winding down. Lock will have to use another timeout, just like early in the first half when the play clock winding down prior to third down. So Missouri uses its first timeout. It is third and long for the Tigers when we come back to Fayetteville. Kind of coming full circle for Missouri as we take a look at this big third down. Lock steps into the pressure and throws a pick. It's Tolliver. Tripped up at the 40-yard line with his second pick of the game. Andre Tolliver, and he brings it 35 yards back on the return. And Talvin Aguim is slapping his head. He said, I had you a convoy outside, my friend. I had you a play. Watch him. The big fella getting ready to make a play. If he just stays outside there. You remember that old song, We Got a Mighty Convoy, don't you? I sure do. Andre Tolliver just doing a great job. Here he is up at the top of the screen. Going to sink off. There was some late pressure on a green dog in his face, which allowed him to sink underneath that route. Great ball skills, man-to-man -man coverage. A little bit of a grab there on Jamon Moore. But the net result was another turnover, which is huge for this team. Whaley on first down. After the quick change, Whaley picks up eight yards. What a senior day for Andre Tolliver. He had one pick on the year, and in his last game as an Arkansas Razorback, yep, that's two. And that's crucial because Missouri has not lost the turnover battle in the last six games. That puts Arkansas up plus one on Missouri. They stole a possession deep down inside the red zone. This is critical for them to turn this into points, Rick. During the winning streak, only one INT. That patted down and incomplete. This is the Arkansas version of the run pass option. We've got a run play here into the boundary. He thinks he can throw out a little what we call a bubble screen. The inside receiver catching the ball behind the line of scrimmage behind two guys. But the edge defender knocks it down. And if you're a right tackle, you got to chop his legs out from underneath him, make him think twice about going up there with that great vertical leap and batting those balls down. Except the offensive tackle thinks it's a run play going the other way. <laughs> Oh, for his last seven passing now, Austin Allen. So run it and take a big shot. I mean, drilled by Frazier right at the line of scrimmage. Austin Allen takes a huge blow. Anthony Sherrill's coming up from that safety position. I don't know if I necessarily like that play call in that situation, running your quarterback on a key third down situation. Well, we'll see if Arkansas has anything up its sleeve. 45. John 
Johnson hits it from the 35. Puts it Arkansas. Oh, he touched, touched, it. touched it at the 10, so not going to get it backed up to the 1, but still solid punt. Well, mark it down around the 8. Good punt, Johnson. Conference title game, guys. New Year's Six Bowl implications. Let's go back to that INT, the last one thrown by Locke. You've heard me say about getting air underneath the throw. Watch Drew Locke right here. He's going to look down this post outside, and what he's going to do is try to throw it again on the line. The corner, what we call, undercuts it. If he puts it to the back of the end zone, he's got a chance for a touchdown. And Dijon Harris, the linebacker on a green dog there, saw that his guy was blocking sort of a delayed blitz, prevented Drew Locke from being able to step into that throw and maybe getting that air that's so important that Rick was talking about. Round three, the running back, the true freshman from Raleigh, takes it to the 15-yard line. And so Arkansas has done a very good job of getting pressure on Locke when not a lot of teams have. Well, coming into this game, this offensive line had only given up nine sacks. They were second in the conference. Today, they've given up three to your point, Carter. Play it to the outside. That's Moore on the edge. Moore tiptoeing. Got just enough, so Moore stays in bounds enough to move the chains. That's what we call a stack bubble screen. They put the two receivers on top of each other, knowing that they can throw it to the receiver behind and block with the receiver in front. They're lined up to do it again here. Now Arkansas adds the second defender. Roundtree cut back. And a good run from Roundtree. Reading zone takes it to the 29. Bijan Jackson thought he might have gotten held there as there's a player down, Briston Guidry. Nice up and coming young player. Reminds me a lot of McTelvin Aguim a year ago. Had a pretty good game himself last week. Number seven, somebody that they're going to want to be healthy to stay in this game to help them finish. Another banged up Arkansas player in a three point game in the third. Hang in the locker room because they really put all their effort into that game for Coach Bielema. Trying to do it again here. Lock, another oh. drop. Yep, team on more, another drop. When you see a receiver having as many drops as this, this is about him trying to do too much. He's worried about what he's going to do after he catches it. It's called a concentration drop. Good thrown ball right in the bread basket, but he's worrying about puncturing the defense and passes offense. Third down, round three, handoff, nothing there. Dijon Harris closes the hole in a hurry. Bring it up, fourth down, and a punt coming for Mizzou. That makes that drop even all that much bigger and now that because uh, you're having to punt the ball away in a game that's a three-point game right here with seven minutes and a half left in the third quarter. Javon Moore's got to make that play. Certainly does. And how about the game that Dijon Harris has had? That linebacker wearing number eight's been all over the field today for Arkansas. But Tony hits it at the 20. Andre Tolliver will let it bounce. And now he scoops it up and gets on top of the football to secure it at the 23. Confident on the field and in the classroom. You are today's Scholar Athletes presented by Quicken Loans. Corey Fatoni, who just hit that punt. And Frank Ragnow, who uh, his career as an Arkansas Razorback on the field has done. Quicken Loans' commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to Missouri and Arkansas's general scholarship funds. Just really enjoy watching Frank Ragnow play. And I've talked to him the last couple weeks down on the field. Big hunter, fisherman, but more importantly, what he does, fellas, he's a geometry thug. He is so tough and <laughs> understands the proper angles getting up to the next level. That's why NFL scouts are drooling over us. That's Whaley going to lose at least a yard. Now, what was that again? The a geometry thug. Wow. Angles and physicality. Is that OG for original geometry? <laughs> That's right. I see what you're doing there. He's going to be a great NFL player, and everyone around Fayetteville is just patting Frank Ragnow on the back and wishing him well at this point. Bielema and said he's among the most smartest players he's ever coached. Anthony Sherrills did not make the tackle there, but he came downhill like you want safeties to come downhill, filling the lane. Austin Allen trying to get it back in the pass game. Deep shot, oh. and it is incomplete off the hands of Stewart. Sherrills, who had a chance at the pick, is down on the ground. Uh, this, this is too bad. Yeah. He, just, he yeah. mistimed oh. his jump and uh, got his foot caught in the turf. And He's holding his right knee. Yep. 
Rick, you hit the nail on the head earlier, man, talking about how physical this kid is. And as they tend to Cheryl's, we step aside. Secondary and a leader of the defense heads to the Tiger sideline right now. And it's third and long after Austin Allen misses another pass. They threw a scissors route in a similar situation earlier. Allen, deep shot, and it is held in. Nice grab. Brandon Morton makes the catch in front of the freshman Adam Sparks. Marked out of bounds on the other side of the 50. Plus territory now. Just a beautifully located ball away from the defender, but inside the out of bounds line. And just a nice job by Brandon Martin coming up with that football. Austin Allen showing you he can throw those back shoulder throws as well. Brandon Martin did a great job of saving that room for his quarterback, so there was room for a back shoulder throw. It's called holding the red line, and Rick is absolutely right. Allen had missed his last eight throws. And now he hands off. Mizzou was ready. Stewart is dropped for a loss by Marcel Frazier. Tried the sweep, and Frazier was all over it for the TFL. Well, he's just had a heck of a game. Here he is right here. You got to set the edge as a defense. That means he's got to keep everything inside of him. So he comes upfield beautifully. So he's a factor in the run game. But we talked about Allen's lack of accuracy here throwing the football. He also has three pass breakups, guys, at the I line was of scrimmage. Say, this guy is playing a whale of a football game. Forcing second and 14, Allen play action. Stepping up, chase, dropped. AC's in there on the stop, along with Trey Williams, a red shirt freshman who was terrific against Vandy. When you take a look at Austin Allen's day today, started out red hot, but then had quite a bit of a lull until we just hit that big pass to Brandon Martin. You got to get a quarterback in the rhythm, get some high percentage throws. And remember, Enos and Bielema talked about not abandoning the run. They have to stay balanced, but that first down loss has put them behind the chains, makes that difficult. Offsides, false start, it's gonna be on the tight end. Backing you in a third and longer if it is on Arkansas. False start. <laughs> yep. Offense, number 18, five drive penalty, still third down. Jeremy Patton just can't do it. This is a situation now, third and long, third and 16, where the defense will give you some underneath throws. Dan Enos will want to know from Bet Bielema, if I get 13, 12 of this, are we going to go for it? So I've got a fourth down call ready to run. So the offensive coordinator knows that prior to the third down call. I was always, as a head coach, always communicating, so he was ready for that kind of thing. I'm sure that kind of conversation is going on right now. So here's the third long play. Allen looking underneath. He's going to take the check down. Williams slipping across the 50. Williams dives forward. Well, there you go. Rick, this is that situation. Fourth and three. This is where Brett Bielema is saying, hey, we're staying out there. The let's players go. want to stay out there. You see the right guard, Johnny Gibson, 62 point. Nah, man, let's go for it. Let's go for it. Why not? Absolutely. You're Arkansas, and you're not going to a bowl game, and you have a chance to get a trophy at the end of the year. Why not? Now, different from a week ago, I hope they give Austin Allen a number of chances here rather than what we call a single-shot rifle for the big play. Give him an opportunity to move the sticks here. They were 0 for 2 on fourth down last week against Mississippi State. Fourth and four, the senior from Fayetteville, Austin Allen. Zips it complete. What a grab by Stewart right in front of AC to convert on fourth down. And the Razorback fans who showed up for this senior day show their appreciation. Call this a little return route. He starts out stored to the sticks and then comes back underneath. AC was unable to stick with him. Great job of finding your way back underneath. My gosh, what about that route? Creating some separation with the spin move. Dig gets back vertical, turns the balls on the money. That's a nice pitching catch. Whaley will take it straight ahead, right side. Whaley delivers another blow to DeMarcus AC and falls forward on second down. Get that positive run game on first down, Rick. This is what we're talking about, condensing the split, getting your wide receiver up on the safety so the corner had to make the tackle. Nice little four or five yard gain. That's what Dan Enos wants. I want to churn clock. I want third down and short. That's how we're going to win this game, Razorbacks. And Therese Hall 
The boundary linebacker there was on a run blitz, came too far upfield, which created another gap and extra separation there. Tigers will take a timeout. They have only one left in the second half and a three-point game. There's a reason the University of Arkansas is one of the nation's fastest growing universities. We learn in one of the best places to live. Dominating national business plan competitions. We're among the top research universities in the U.S. Where teaching and learning lead to discovery. We explore everything. Our traditions set us apart. And bring us together. Even our sidewalks mean something. With the names of all our graduates. We leave our mark here. And everywhere. The University, University of, of Arkansas. Arkansas. Barry Odom was also the defensive coordinator, uses a timeout there. This is the ninth play of the Arkansas drive, longest drive of the day for the Razorbacks. And the people saying thank you more than anybody else are those defensive guys down there getting a chance to take a blow. Because you're going against that high octane offense of Missouri, that is not an easy task. On second down, Whaley's in the backfield behind Austin Allen. And he'll take it on the left side. Huge hole, Whaley checks up, but he keeps his feet all the way in with a touchdown. Dev Wall Whaley from 28 yards to put Arkansas back on top. What a great run. What a great Dev Wall Whaley burst into the starting role after Raleigh Williams was declared. Uh, not able to continue as a football player with the neck injury in spring ball. Much was expected of this youngster. Had his ups and downs. Got to feel good for him right now. That run game that was so critical to Arkansas has come up big in the red zone for him today. There may not be a bowl game at the end of the year for the Razorbacks. 2017, not what Arkansas wanted. But there's a trophy on the line. And a chance for the Razorbacks to go out strong in 17. With 2.02 to go in the third. First points of the second half belong to Arkansas. Roundtree takes it across the 20 to near the 25. Let's go back to the touchdown. Well, this play may look familiar. It's just going to be a fold scheme. But this time, they put the backup center in there, Jake Rollerson, who's been playing. And he executes the same block we saw earlier successfully. We talked about Cale Garrett, the middle linebacker, and how smart he was. He gets himself a little bit wide there. Rollerson does just enough to be able to nick him, and it's off to the races for 21. Jake Rollerson is a modern-day free agent. He's what we call the graduate transfer. He was in Texas, graduated, tried to get into UCLA. That didn't work out. Comes to Arkansas as a tackle and ends up playing center. They've had guys that play defensive line that are playing offensive line for him. It's been a patchwork Long operation. Is Callaway on the edge who had a chance at the interception and he could have taken it back as Jonathan Johnson, the intended receiver, couldn't haul it in. And another high ball by Drew Lockrick. Again, dealing from the bottom of the deck, trying to throw it out there, gets it all over to, and, and Shevin Callaway is going to remember that one. Johnson got maybe a little bit of alligator arms on there, hearing some footsteps. Kind of like you in the check cup. <laughs> Come on now, I'll carry my weight. Play fake, lock, second and ten to the outside. Moore hauls this one in in front of Tolliver. But Andre Tolliver stops him short of the line to gain. It'll be third and short. This Mar is marvel at this youngster's arm talent. Third and short. Roundtree takes Woo! it. Stood up, driven back. Dijon Harris leads the charge. Fourth and one for Mizzou. Guy, Drew Locke is going to be kicking himself. He didn't keep this ball. If you're Missouri, you got to punt this ball away. The momentum's completely run with Arkansas right now. Remember Locke's ability to get him to jump, though. Going for it from their own 34. Roundtree over the top, stretching to get it. Wow, how about the gamble by Mizzou on fourth down from your own 34? I think it's a heck of a risk, but you look like a genius when it pans out. The combination of the speed and giving it to 33 Roundtree, the freshman that goes up and over, gets it. Play action lock, loads on more, incomplete. Left it too high. 
And once again, put more air under it, Mr. Lock. Come on, find the keys to this particular lock. Get it over the top, and this is a touchdown. He will learn that before it's said and done. I think it's pretty clear if there's a coaching point from you, the quarterback coach and offensive coordinator head coach. I think we're pretty sure what the coaching point is. Yeah, he's got it locked up. Oof. <laughs> Oof. I'm on the board. Oof. All right, second down. <laughs> Lock to the outside. Brown across the 45. He has a first down. Tackle made by Callaway, the true freshman corner. Well, Rick's talking about putting enough air up underneath it. I played with some gunslingers, and that is the hardest thing for them to do is to not rely on their best weapon, which is their arm strength. Fake it. Lock. Fires complete. Same play. Brown right in front of Callaway. When he gets it going like this, it's like surgery. Because again, there are four plays going. He can hand it off, he can keep it on the read of the run portion, or he can take whichever side he thinks is uh, appropriate for the pass opportunity. And Missouri made some substitutions, so Arkansas just did as well on the defensive line. Fake it. Locke's going to run it this time. Takes a slide. Looked like he wanted Brown in front of Callaway again. The slide started at the 40, and that's likely the last play of the third quarter. After Missouri outscored Arkansas 24-7 in the second, the Razorbacks have the only points of the third quarter, and they take a lead to the fourth quarter. 35-31. And I think we've got both of those here today. First play of the fourth quarter, second down, Roundtree takes the handoff as he gets to the 36. Well, third down now, and I think, again, we're in four down. Evidenced by the fact they went for it on fourth and one way backed up. I think he's got two downs here, so don't be surprised if, again, he deals from the bottom of the deck and takes a throw. Victor up. Long toss. First down. Boonham makes the grab. Liddell finally brings him down. Gain of 11. That young man has such soft hands. He is going to be an unbelievable weapon in this conference for years to come. From Springfield, Illinois, converted wide receiver. Lock hands, round tree. Another freshman for Mizzou takes him inside the 20. Dijon Harris that time, the middle linebacker, got too far upfield, which opened up the gap and allowed Roundtree to get north and south and puncture the defense. You love the aggression, but you also have to play fundamentally sound and properly cancel your gap. Roundtree on second down, slipping inside the 15, delivering a blow as Roundtree takes it to the 10. Let's look at the Verizon Red Zone stats. And for Missouri, this is their fourth trip. First two were touchdowns, then there was a field goal. Roundtree's going to take it on first and goal. And this is Okawebunam's spot right here, Aaron. You called it last time. This is where they look for him. 23 catches now on the season, or 24 now with that last one, and 10 of them touchdowns. This is where he becomes a real target. Here he is in the slot. Right here. So second and goal. Send him in motion. Lock. Fakes it. Tosses out the back of the end zone. Incomplete. Intended for Blanton to make it third and goal. Cameron Curl in coverage. And now we check the flag. Away from the ball. This is the, the problem with an RPO offense. The receiver downfield, number seven on the offense. Number seven was covered up. Five yard penalty, second down. Here he is right here. He's covered up, meaning they're both on the line of scrimmage right there. He's got to be off to be eligible. That isn't a problem of scheme, that's just a, a mistake yep. by the receiver. Yep, yep. Oftentimes in the RPO role, the offensive line thinks it's a run and they're down the field. That wasn't the case on that particular down. That was just a misalignment. We've not seen Emmanuel Hull in the second half. Uh, so Brown is playing for Hull, commits that penalty. And now Brown comes out, Collins is in for third and goal for Missouri. 
Decline the penalty Arkansas did to make it third and goal. So spotted back at the eight. This is definitely a position where they're going to be looking for 81. It'll be one-on-one uh, -on -one into that boundary. So on third and goal, Rock stands, delivers, caught, touchdown. Okaway Bonham again with his second TD. Flex those big muscles. 6'5", 260, you cover him. Have fun with that. Well, we talked to Drew Locke on the phone and said, hey, we need a big play in the game. What are you doing? He said, man, I would throw it to number 81 on a corner route, and that's exactly what he did. His 11th TD grab of the year, the fourth passing touchdown of the day for Drew Locke. Two of them to the big man from Springfield. Nice call, Rick. I see you. Said he used that red shirt year. Okaway Boonham coming out of high school, packing on 40 pounds. He said, yeah, there was weight room. There was also a lot of waffles. Getting ready to play tight end of the SEC. The PAT is good. More pushing and shoving as Missouri regains the lead. Those waffles are paying off now for big number 81, the Missouri Tigers. in his Arkansas career. And I don't know what those who are going to make the decision are going to be thinking about if we watch the return. Uh-oh, he got it. Warren has it across the 20, across the 30. Here goes Warren, out of bounds at the 45. There is a flag down. Kind of the place where you'd call off sides. Getting back to my point about uh, Bielema. They're going to make the decision that's going to be best for Arkansas. That's their job. But you cannot quarrel. We'll listen to the official here. Offside, kicking team, number three, five-yard penalty, and to the end of the return, first down. Both United and JetBlue have direct flights to New York, <laughs> if anybody's listening. Williams, left side, short gain, Frazier on the stop. Don't forget, later in the game, the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. Rick, I want to get back to your point about Brett Bielema. Whoever is making this ultimate decision, or group, committee, what have you, you cannot not pay attention to the way this team is responding to him. You know, he, he, went, he went through this over and over again with us, the injuries, whether it's Ragnow, Raleigh Williams, Austin Allen, another injury here, Jared Cornelius earlier in the year. He learned a trick from Barry Alvarez at Wisconsin that you, you rank your players from 1 to 85, your scholarship players. They lost six of their top 10 players this year. And yeah, the records are what the records are. But this was a star in the coaching world not so long ago, having taken Wisconsin to three Rose Bowls, guys. Three Rose Bowls. Now, he didn't, he didn't coach the third as he took this Arkansas job, but uh, hey, the records are what they are. 11 and 28 in, in SEC play. That's, that's something he has to live with, and ultimately the decision makers will do what they do. But I'm just saying, if you're sitting here and wondering who the next guy is and you don't have somebody, pay attention to how hard this team's playing. And as you see him come out there and look at the player down that's Yelda Froholt, been battling injuries all season long in both ankles. Rick, you're absolutely right. There's nobody that cares about his players more than Bielema does. So you see Froholt get to his feet there. When you consider who they've lost to this year, I know it hasn't been the year that they've wanted, but four of these teams are currently ranked in the top 15. Six of their seven losses are to top 25 teams. The seventh is a 7-4 seven and four Texas A&M team. When you combine that with what's coming back, with the injuries that they had and who they lost to, there's a very strong argument for the people listening that are making that decision that Brett Bielema moving forward could have a very good situation on his hands next season. To your point, 75 to 80 percent of the offense and the scoring this year has been by first and second year players. The second 10, we'll get back to that in a moment, but. Paul Ramirez coming in for Froholt, 76. Allen out of the gun on second down. Austin Allen hit as he throws, incomplete. And here comes the flag. Yeah, Terry Becker Jr. delivered another blow to Austin Allen. Is this going to be a roughing the passer or a targeting? 
Beckner, the junior from East St. Louis. It was a major recruiting get for Missouri. Banged up his first couple of years. He's starting to come into his own. He is a tough physical player. Question is, does he cross the line here? After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number five on the defense after the quarterback was down. 15-yard penalty, oh, yeah. automatic first down. Right there at the end, you could see the club, the extracurricular. Stupid. Well, in a game that's 38-35, all these things matter. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they absolutely matter. And again, Arkansas obviously wanting to score a touchdown, but take as much of this clock as they can to let that defense rest and keep that slinger Drew Locke on that sideline. And that's just the sort of play that gets a Arkansas team fired up. Missouri doesn't want to do anything to motivate this team that would love nothing more than to knock them off in their last regular season game. Williams will take it. Williams pushing, stretching across the 25. My favorite thing to do is to tee Aaron up. Tell him about the gap scheme, Aaron. <laughs> There's a lot of people that think on the eighth day God created the power play, and this is what it's going to be. It's going to be pulling linemen. You're trying to build a wall right here, and that's exactly what they do. Rollerson does a good job getting his back block and then how about Paul Ramirez the pulling guard he's the one that just came in for Coho doing a nice job of blocking Lee right there on the outside edge and Arkansas moving the chains a battered offensive line still doing its job for the Hawks take the toss Austin Allen on the roll Brown set it up it was snipped out AC was all over the tight end Pat. and so it's a busted play second down there is some hitting going on in there, boys, on the left side of the offensive line. Keep your eye right here. I believe it's going to be Johnny Gibson that's going to pull out across the ball. Keep an eye on him. Actually, it was number five, Brandon Martin, that came in on the crackback. Number 62 was standing over him. My apologies there, but my goodness, there is a physicality to this game that's going on across the board. Pro hold back at left guard. Williams takes the handoff on second down, and he's shoved back. Cale Garrett, a sophomore middle linebacker from Carney, Missouri. It's always his dream to play football at Missouri, and he's done it well in his sophomore year, leading tackler for the Tigers. Well, we featured him. Here he is here. He's just going to do a nice job. We talked about his angles and reading fast flow. Gets off, keeps his shoulders square, and then just drives his hips through at the line of scrimmage, doing a nice job canceling his gap. He was two days away from going to the Naval Academy when Missouri talked him into saying, hey, you know what? We got a scholarship for you. Come and be with us. Maybe he wishes they had him. Austin Allen, long drop, setting up the screen. They caught it on the right. what you do on senior day that's what you do on senior day we've talked about the screen being a big time arrow in this quiver of Dan Enos this time they finally get it set up and executed to perfection they timed it perfectly Missouri brought their linebackers there it's a perfect call in the situation you combine that with a couple missed tackles again on the outside edge and Arkansas going up by 42 to 38. David Williams, graduate transfer, could have gone anywhere for his senior year. He wanted to be a Razorback. Last game with the Hogs, he has his third touchdown, and Arkansas has the lead on Mizzou in the fourth. Great deal of thanks for our crew and for all of you. Round tree from the seven. Round tree. He has a seam across the 30, across the 40 with a flag down. Round tree out of bounds near midfield. And the Razorbacks and Tigers continue to scrap. I'll check the flag from Hubert Owens. It might be against Missouri. Going to return. Holding. Receiving team number 31. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. This is where you have to be at your best and maintain your composure. 
penalties are about bad fundamentals and bad technique. Everybody wants to make a play, Rick, but you know both as a player and as a coach, you can't afford. You don't know which two or three plays in this game are going to make the difference, and it very well could be a penalty like that if you're Missouri. They've got to be smarter here with only 10 minutes to go. People at home wonder, oh, how can there be this many penalties on kick plays? I mean, how, how hard is it not to block somebody in the back? How hard is it not to hold? But people are moving at such speed, and they're running to get their jobs done. They make too often make mistakes. 80 points, nearing 1,000 combined yards. And we got 10.33 to go in the fourth. Lock zips it complete. That's, oh, no, it's incomplete. Johnson couldn't haul it in. How many of those have we seen today, fellas? Four or five. At least. Most of them by Jamon Moore. But that time it was by their slot receiver, Jonathan Johnson. Again, trying to do too much instead of simply executing. Long to throw again. Heavy pressure. Deep shot looking for Moore. Holds it in at the 50. Jamon Moore. The back shoulder came back to get it in front of Tolliver. Gain of 41. Another 50-50 ball here. Jamon Moore just going to take him deep. This was a predetermined throw and, and underthrown this time. As a matter of fact, he did put quality air underneath this, which allowed the receiver time to come back for the ball. Back to the ground. Witter, right side. Ooh, big pop. Witter takes it and moves on inside the 45. Nice job that time by the second level. No safeties coming downhill. There's really good run support across the board by this Arkansas defense. This is where this run pass option offense has an advantage, and especially now they're going to be in four down territory. Arkansas had, may have had an extra player on the field. Winner going to take it to the 35, and now here's that flag. And not have gotten him off in time. You had this discussion with the last week's replay official, Al Ford, that actually in college, you, you try to give you the benefit of the doubt getting off. We'll check. Substitution infraction. Defense. Tells us the climb. Jump to the play first down. It looked as if the line judge agreed with you, Carl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're right. The line judge right here down on the sideline, he says, you know what? He tried hard enough to get off. And it was the field judge who threw the flag. Yeah. He had a nice slide, though. He's probably safe at seven. <laughs> It'll need to climb. It's win. Might have been a hole there. Harris makes the stop. Caps. Tell you what, we've been talking about this front seven. And we started the game talking about number three, McTelvin again, this defensive line needing to get penetration and pass rush. But these guys have been on the field so much, they're going to have to dig deep here. Winner takes it again, his 29th carry. Takes a pop from DeAndre Coley. At the 25-yard line, we'll see if it's enough to move the chains. It is. First down, Missouri. And, uh, so the coaching staff here for Arkansas is an injured player is trying to get off the field to tell him to sit down. Allow the training staff to come out to see you so we can attend to your needs, but also allow our substitutions to take place and all of a sudden get a little blow. Tell you what, this is play 87 for Missouri. This defense, which doesn't have a lot of depth, it's been on the field a long time. Wow. Better buckle your junk, 20. Second time that we've seen Coley go down. Meanwhile, for Missouri, Ish Witter, four straight carries, 23 yards. Missouri's ready to go with Coley headed to the sideline again. Now the Arkansas defense out there for first down. And let me give Coley some credit. He was a guy that came up and has been bringing it there. He throws his body around. It's really good to see him get up off the field. You hope he's okay so that he can come back in. But this guy's been a warrior out there today. Look how wide the splits are in this offense, guys. They just do not allow you to be a half a player. You are have to go commit to cover. Fifth straight carry for Ish Witter. Trips up. And only gets a yard. They're running that counter scheme where they're pulling two guys trying to get to that right side using the gap schemes, which again are double teams on the play side, try and get some movement and build walls on the back side, trying to create creases in that defense. But again, Arkansas doing a nice job up front. Lock from the gun. 
Fix it. Tosses to the end zone. Moore has it in. Is he in bounds? Yes. Touchdown, Missouri. Jamon Moore, a remarkable grab. And a 24-yard touchdown. We're gonna... This is an unbelievable play by Drew Locke. This was a pitch and go. And Tolliver read it perfectly. Look at the push off right there, Rick. Andre Tolliver, he got pushed in the back by Jamon Moore, who got away what could have been an offensive pass interference call, and that's why Bielema was upset. There was contact, no question about it. But, but my a God. unbelievable throw to the back shoulder based on the reaction by the corner. And how about Jamon Moore's body control to make that catch after all the drops he's had? McCann PAT. Jamon Moore hauls it in on the fifth touchdown pass of the day for Drew Locke. Give him 43 on the year. The SEC single season record. And Jamon Moore there to help out his QB with some nifty work with the hands and the feet for a Mizzou touchdown. For tomorrow, boys. Still an Old Testament right there. Short kick, scooped up. Arkansas will have it near the 30-yard line. Here comes a flag. Looked like that was a late hit. Mm. And... Has a little look of the makeup call right there, does it not, boys? Glad you said it. <laughs> After the play was over, personal foul, late hit out of bounds. On the kicking team, number 18. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. That's Bledsoe. Everybody's playing chippy and hard. Yeah. yeah. Enough said on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Enough said. Another big drive. How many times have we said this today, guys? Yeah. And it's amazing. There's still 8-12. This feels, I mean, the game is rolling on past 5 o'clock local time after a 1.30 kick. It has been action-packed. And there's still 8-12 to go. Whaley on the right side. Whaley falls forward to the 49. So we saw the Dr. Pepper SEC standings in the West. Here it is in the East. Georgia awaits the winner between Alabama and Auburn. Georgia's got a big contest against Georgia Tech in that triple option. It's always interesting what it what kind of taxing uh, uh, effect a, a triple option has on a team knowing they got to play a week from now. It's such a different animal. It's really hard to get ahead against either Auburn or Alabama, who they're assuredly facing the week after they play a scrappy Georgia Tech team. Allen, nice throw to the outside. Complete and slipping away for a few more. Brandon Martin takes it inside the 40. This is what I thought we would see today in the pass game from Austin Allen. These short to intermediate throws, a nice outbreaking route, nice generous cushion that time by Missouri, maybe too generous because the Razorbacks moved the chains there. I couldn't agree more, Aaron. I would have thought we'd seen a lot more of that, but never too late, right? Gone over a thousand yards combined offense, 87 points so far. Nearing 150 snaps in the game. Stewart on the edge with a block. And it's Martin who had the big grab on the last play. Throwing a block this time for Stewart. Martin may have paid the price. He's coming out with a banged up shoulder. Finally, Marcel Frazier doesn't get his hands on the football. He was close. He's right here on the end coming up field. He almost gets that right hand, but look at the bottom of the screen. Just a beautiful block. This is a play they've tried to run two other times, but 16, Frazier knocked it down. This time they get it off, and you see why they wanted to run it. It was a really effective play for them. Austin Allen, who grew up a Razorback. Fayetteville with his dad, Bobby, on the staff. They may have to take a timeout here. He is going to have to use a timeout. In his last game as an Arkansas Razorback, Austin Allen trying to rally the Razorbacks on another touchdown drive in the fourth. Boys, they say that poise is being at your best when your best is needed, and Brandon Allen, excuse me, his brother Austin, has been that today. Now Brandon did it for the Razorbacks, <laughs> now he's an L.A. Ram. Now it's Austin Whaley popped and driven back. Beckner leads the charge. Frazier finishes it all. 
tried to give a fake fly sweep look there, and it, Tigers weren't buying it. Coming off this weak side here, making big play. Here he is right there. Yeah, he just beats Brian Wallace across his face. Bad footwork there. You got to get your head across his body on that slant there. He's so quick twitch getting upfield, it makes it really difficult, and that's why your footwork is so important on a cutoff block. Two years ago in this game where Brandon checked out, handed the football to Austin. And now on second down, Austin Allen. Oh, that's a drop. Costly win, Brandon Martin, trying to help his QB out. Coming back to the football. Now you're in a third and 11 situation. You've already hit them with a screen down here, so they're going to be expecting that. This is an area of the field where Barry Odom, who also serves as a defensive coordinator, likes to pin his ears back and bring some pressure. What are you thinking here offensively, Rick? Well, you cannot take a sack. You're down three. You're in field goal range right now. It's probably a 42, 43 yarder. This ball's got to get out of his hands expeditiously. You got a single cover up there at the top. I like an out to the field. They've been good on third and long. This is third and 11. Allen rolling inside toss. Nothing there. Wrestle down and uh, we'll see if the field goal unit comes out. And that's exactly what the Razorbacks are playing for. Limpert coming on to try and tie it. I think the thought there, guys, was I'm not going to take a sack. No question. I'm not taking a sack. I'm going to try something. If it works, great. If it doesn't, we give our kicker a chance. The ball's now positioned in the middle of the field. See if we can tie this thing up. He's 7 for 8 on the year. The only miss, 44-yarder at Ole Miss, and came back and kicked the game winner. So the 42-yarder is easily good. And with five minutes to go in the fourth quarter, Nothing determined yet. 45 all between Missouri and Arkansas. Those two teams playing like it. Back and forth there between the Bulls and the Knights. Back and forth here with the battle line trophy on the line. Round three from the goal line across the 20. Round three to the 24. And we have no flags hey. on the kickoff. What do you know? So talk about true luck now with five TD passes on the day of the SEC. Single season record. All hits. Just over the top of the hole a couple of times. He has uh, been nothing sort of phenomenal as advertised, I guess. Call him the Loch Ness Monster. I mean, this group of receivers among the best in the SEC. Three of their receivers are in their top ten. They're long, they're athletic, they're young. And there's something that Arkansas is going to have to reckon here is they want a false start. How, lo how long did they have to point at it? I mean, they lobbied hard to get this False flag. start, 77 on the offense. Five yard penalty. You're behind the chains right out of the gate. Granted, you're on the road. We've made mention that this isn't necessarily a full stadium, but this has been a team that all game long has been hurt by penalties. Missouri's had gone on touchdown drives, 92 yards, 92 yards in the first half. The last one was 89 yards. Backed up again, leg it to the outside. Nate Brown makes the grab, tackled by Cameron Curl. Just a matter of how often he wants to take it. It's there all day long, and when they come up and get in his face, he's taking him over the top with brilliant long-distance touchdown throw. He talked about how good Missouri is with the big plays. Winner drop. That's B. John Jackson, the senior whose day began with a successful marriage proposal. B. John Jackson. He's that big guy right there in the middle. Nobody blocks him. The right guard, the left guard, Kevin Pendleton, come, tried to come down on him, but again, he left his feet behind him. And now it's third and long because of the penalty on first down. Missouri's trying to convert. He sees pressure coming off. Now the question is, does Arkansas change? They were going to bring Randy Razor off that weak side. Do they do it again? It looks like they're backing off. Here they come. Lock on third and seven. Hit as he throws. Caught at the 50. Lock delivers a strike to Jonathan Johnson to convert on third and long. A gain of 25. When you have the speed that you have, your defensive backs give these guys a lot of room. We've seen Jonathan Johnson burn them, and he takes advantage of the space there. There with the first down carry. Slips through. 
Here's Ritter rolling inside the 30. The Tigers hit the big one in the pass game, and now is Ritter on the ground inside the 30. Another Razorback is down. This one's a gain of 22 for Ish Witter. And how about Ish Witter? I mean, taking full advantage. Demarie Crockett goes down. He and Larry Roundtree become the guys. Both of them. Ish Witter's averaging over 100 yards in each of these last five games. Today, a career high right now in carries, right? That's right. An unbelievable performer. Now we've got to check on the injured Razorback. I, that's Dijon Harris, oh, no. the sophomore middle linebacker, the second leading tackler in the SEC. Oh, got leg whipped by his own guy, Briston Gidry there. That is a big one for Arkansas defensively for the last 326 of this game. The leader in the middle, and the sophomore with over 100 tackles on the year. Only Devin White of LSU has more in the SEC. That's one of those young players, Carter, that we were talking about earlier that could come back for this, coming back for Arkansas, whether or not Brett Bielema is a head coach or not. But there are some players on this roster that they have recruited and developed that are heck of football players. And when they get healthy next year again, there's going to be some talent here. But right now, they got bigger fish to fry with 320 left in a tie game in the fourth quarter. Brand Morgan takes his spot at Mike Linebacker. Missouri letting some clock roll right now. Under three minutes. Mizzou only has that one timeout, but they're trying to bleed it, not give it back to the Hogs. No hurry. You'd love to have this end with you in possession and in control of the outcome. Lock on first down. Fake it, toss it, complete. Brown on the edge. Good down. Now wrestle down. Curl makes a stop. 245. Second and two. Ball inbounds. And right now. Brett Bielema is going to have to start considering, all right, when do I use mine to ensure that I get the ball back? Just on this play, they can take it down to almost two minutes. So that's exactly what Brett Bielema is rolling through right now with two left. And if there's been a complaint of these high-tempo offenses, is their unwillingness to do what we're seeing right here. Obviously, Barry Odom and Josh Heupel on the same page as to how to, how to attack uh, Arkansas with this being the situation. And second and two makes that quite a bit easier. Witter takes it again. First down inside the 20. Shelving forward inside the 15. Move the chains. First down. Clock still rolling as soon as they have it set. I think you're going to see Brett Bielema use his timeouts now. Maybe not now, but after this first down play is over, you're going to start seeing him use his. Remember, Missouri only has one left. And Missouri hasn't lost. He's a telling the official now, I'm calling timeout when the play is down. Missouri's got to hold on to this football to Rick's point. You can't take a sack and you can't obviously have a turnover here. They haven't had a fumble since October 7th against Kentucky. So center quarterback and running back exchange is critical here. Witter takes it. Witter stretching. Flag down. So that's going to stop it with a minute 25 with a flag. And, and now be able to say, hey. Make sure you don't take that time out because That's the flag right. stops it. And usually officials are really good about that. It's a big usually. <laughs> well, you don't want me to have to tell a story. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> so we'll sort it out and see if this saves Arkansas a timeout. Let's take the clock from 40 to 25, too. Wow. Wow. And Hubert Owens will give us a call. It looks like hold on the offense. Question whether Arkansas takes it or not. Arkansas has to take the penalty. No question. It, it, it helps you not only with the conversion, but also with the distance on the field goal. Their defensive line's been Holding. getting some penetration. Offense, number 54. Penalty is declined. Oh. Second down. Wow. And so now it's. Oh. Arkansas. So, penalty and still the timeout. One remaining for Arkansas with a minute 25. And coming up after our game, stay tuned for the college football postgame show powered by Ram. A lot to sort through on this Thanksgiving weekend.
Obviously, he doesn't need as many timeouts with now the down being second. But 10 yards right there, I think, was meaningful, Aaron, <laughs> to move him back and make this a much harder first down to attain. Uh, right I'm, now, if they make a first down, they hold all the cards. I don't, I don't understand why they would decline that. I think you and I saw this the same way. The 10 extra yards helps you in all situations. Especially when Missouri would love to run the ball right now and keep this clock and or get rid of timeouts for the Razorbacks. You factor in the kicking game now with Tucker McCann, the sophomore who has now made nine straight since missing two at Kentucky. Hit from 37 earlier, so you're already well within his range. Now it's just Missouri trying to set it up, lead the clock. You take the touchdown here. Here's Jamon Moore down here by himself again. Locke is going to pull it. Locke has room ahead inside the five. Touchdown, but a flag down. Well, that will likely wipe out the go-ahead TD run by Drew Locke. It's going to be holding on Jamon Moore. Who had his hands outside the frame of Andre Tolliver. Holding offense number six. Ten yard penalty. The spot of the foul. Replay second down. Here it is coming right at us. You see in the bottom left corner, both hands outside. He's got to bring his elbows tight to his body. Come inside Andre Tolliver. But it's that hand right there, right in front of the official, that gets seen. And it pulls a touchdown off the board. Now you add that yardage that they just lost. Had they accepted Arkansas the penalty before that, consider where this ball might end up. But again, costly penalties for Missouri in critical situations been a factor all day long. Makes it second and eight. Dijon Harris back for the Razorbacks. Here's Witter. Timeout, Arkansas. Yep. T.J. Smith makes a stop. So a minute 14. There's the last time out used by Arkansas. So third down, Rick, if you're Missouri, are you setting up for field goal here? Do you take one more shot, or does that leave does that leave Arkansas too much time if you go for the touchdown? I think what's going to happen here is they're going to give a zone read, meaning Drew Locke will have the opportunity to hand the ball off or keep it and keep himself as a runner. You, would, you don't want to throw an incomplete pass here and give Arkansas that much time to come back and either tie or win the game. This is a position right here without any timeouts left for the Hogs. You'd like to use at least 40 of these seconds. Well, assuming that Arkansas would get a stop here, you'd almost think from a clock management standpoint, you wish that Missouri had a score to be able to save some time if that's what you're considering. But this is, needless to say, boys, the third down play of the game. Austin Allen hoping to have a chance to close out his Arkansas career in, if not storybook fashion, at least a storybook ending. Hold your water up front it's defensively. Lock, hands to Witter, on third and three inside the five-ish. Witter moves the chains, first and goal, Missouri. Arkansas cannot stop the clock. It'll start rolling as soon as it's marked ready for play. And now down to a minute. Now you for need to let him score. Goal. Now you need to let him score. And Witter will take it. He is dropped. Leading the clock, 56. You, you think it's clear here? Just let him take it in. I don't think there's any question that this is an extra point in terms of the kick that will be left for Missouri. You let them in right now. You give Austin Allen a chance to come down the field. I know there's a chance for a fumble, and it's the hardest thing in the world for a defensive coach, you know, to, to, to let somebody in. But to me, it's the percentage point. And we'll see how both teams play it. Lock, hand off. Ritter, he's shoving, and he is held up, driven back by Ramirez. A game there on the stop. You got third and goal coming. I mean, it's just ticking down now for Missouri. They want to score. They sure do. Run it again. Back, Locke is going to hand off Ritter. He's shot back. Going to let it run down to about three seconds. Goal line stand for Arkansas, but that may be the last thing that the Razorbacks need as McCann. Interesting. On fourth and goal, Missouri takes the timeout with nine seconds. Both hit coaches out of timeouts, and McCann will presumably have a chance to chip it in for the game winner. There's no reason to leave nine seconds on, especially given that it's fourth down. Sometimes coaches yep. are risk averse and they say, well, I want to leave more on and 
uh, more time on so if the holder drops it we can have a fourth down and still kick. But as a fourth down here you want to take that down inside of four seconds so that you don't have to kick off. We've all seen those kind of miracles. We plays. certainly have and I lived exactly what you're talking about Rick letting a team score in Super Bowl 32 we let Denver score and we came up we had crossed midfield to try and preserve time we just ran out of time we did a little too little little too late but that's a strategy that we tried once it came up short nonetheless here goes Missouri trying to win this game to try and make it a six game winning streak McCann but Tony is the holder wise is the snapper with nine seconds McCann's field goal is easily good Missouri grabs the lead with five seconds showing. 48-45. Locke leads him down. McCann finishes it off, making his 10th straight field goal kick. And it would take a minor miracle for Arkansas to pull it off now. Missouri, five seconds away from six straight wins. What a great clock drive by Missouri. Exercising how to take time off the clock, Utilizing all the things they need to do, getting it to, right to the buzzer beater. Only thing is, they shouldn't be having to kick off. <laughs> well, and it's going to be a squib kick to be sure. And as much credit as you want to give to this Missouri team, if you're an Arkansas fan, you're feeling it. But that last series kind of sums up their entire season. And we've talked lots about Brett Bielema and the predicament he finds himself in. And it will be what it will be. We'll wish him well if this is, in fact, going to be his last game at Arkansas. But how about the job Barry Odom has done, guys? One in five. You know, there are all kinds of things swirling around about the future of this him at Missouri as the head coach. A new AD, Jim Sterk. Arkansas had a lateral play to close out last week. Now they're going to fall. No lateral play here. Uh, they're going to save it for an offensive snap. Four seconds. Well, Carter, you and I have seen some late game shenanigans mm -hmm. with Arkansas. They certainly have some things in them. That's when they hit Hunter Henry that threw it over his head and it bounced and bounced into the hands of Alex Collins and he took it around the left side and ended up making a heck of a play. Thought he was down tried to turn and fumble and then chaos ensued they ended up beating a pretty good old miss team it'll take a hunter henry and 75 yards to pull this one off <laughs> exactly finishing the thought on barry odom just a remarkable job wishing well in the bowl game and rick the conversation you should share of him trusting who he is and getting back is what turned it around is allen scrambling last chance he allen tosses it up it's knocked down it is Wow. They're going to toss it back as the play. Now we're finally waiting for a signal. Now it's incomplete. Pass incomplete. Missouri wins it. 48-45. Six straight for the Tigers. And more heartbreak for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Brett Bielema said this week, scores are a great thing. They represent the tough times you've been through and what you've persevered. There's a lot of scars right now for the Razorbacks. This will, be an, loss. this will be an emotional locker room for Arkansas. No Time question now about the play of the game presented by Nava Auto Parts. It's TD pass number five by Drew Locke. Team on Moore holds it in with a little shove. But it's a TD in the books that tied it at 45 and allowed for the game-winning field goal from Tucker McCann. So for Aaron Taylor, Rick Neuheisel, John Schriffman, our entire crew here in Fayetteville, I'm Carter Blackburn saying so long. Final score, 48-45, Missouri wins it over Arkansas. The college football postgame show powered by Rams up next after these messages.